Greetings, Guardians. Welcome to the 20th episode of the Destiny Tracker Podcast. I am your host, Jay, the content manager here at DestinyTracker.com. And joining me this week are my wonderful co-hosts. We have Dan Fennedy. Hi! What's up, man? Jay Ram. Yo, what's up, everyone? Plasmic Leaf. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Pubin. Hey, you guys. Hi. What's up, man? Welcome back, Jay Ram. Welcome out, Plasmic. I know you guys were off last week. Welcome back. So, our guests this week are Dr. Lupo. What up, what up? What up? And Syntax7. What up, what up? What's up? Hey. You know, he got the up? memo. He got the memo. <laughs> he got the memo. He knows. What's the, what the fuck is wrong with the rest of you guys, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. It's what up, what up? I ignored the memo, damn it. <sighs> Pubin was too busy trying to match me 50 times in one weekend. <laughs> it happened, it happened one weekend. I've been trying to do it ever since. <laughs> I Maybe if I do it this time. time. <laughs> All right, guys. I will get you. So before we jump into our news, we do have a few things that we need to go over first. So, you guys can find us on iTunes, Podbean, and the Google Play Store at Destiny Tracker Podcast. We do record the show every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern live on twitch.tv slash Destiny Track. You guys, make sure to check out the other podcasts here on the DTR Podcast Network. We have the Destiny Lorecast, Destiny Down and Under, the RNG Cast, Destiny Massive Breakdown, oh my god, <laughs> and Rabbit Hole. You can find all of these podcasts on Podbean and iTunes. Alright guys, so... Let's start the show. So, Syntax, let's start off with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do in, here in the community? I'm one of the three people that play PB. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I, I'm uh, with you, let buddy. me rephrase that. I'm one of the three people that stream PB. Um, <laughs> you have two right uh, here. Yeah, you have the I, other two I are right is, here. Um, <laughs> I, I, mainly, I mainly help people through the raid. Um, Whatever the current rate is, and that's what I like to do. Nice, nice. All right, Lupo, you're up. I uh, I'm I'm one of the other three guys that streams PVE. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, I totally don't. Um, typically, I'm a trials player uh, or PVP in general. We've been doing a lot of tourney stuff recently with Casual as me, True Vanguard, uh, Steph Ryu, uh, and Genius. Uh, three really freaking awesome players. Um, We've been playing Far Cog's tourney stuff uh, the last couple weekends. So I haven't been playing as much trials. Uh, but we'll pull pretty much anybody from chat. Doesn't matter if you're low light, high light, if you've been a million times to Lighthouse or if you've never been before. Um, and we're uh, I like to keep the stream as, as clean as possible for uh, you know, for anybody jumping in. So if you're if you're looking to try and pay for a run, I'm not the guy. If you're looking to talk a whole ton of shit, I'm also not the guy. Uh, <laughs> but we just uh, and if anybody was not aware, uh, I am the dude that plays uh, mouse and keyboard. So I'm, I know there will be questions about I that do. at some point, right? If you didn't, if you didn't already know, maybe I heard all about <laughs> it. The the aimbot and keyboard. I actually got a YouTube comment yep. this week that said aimbot and keyboard. So I like I enjoyed that. <laughs> You've been found out, man. You've been found so, out. You of all people should know, Pubin. <laughs> <laughs> got him. <laughs> Roasted. I did. I was there. I was like, this son of a bitch, not only is he mouse and keyboard, but he's got some sort of dope ass aimbot, because I swear. Uh, it, would make, it would make my life a whole lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> Alright, so, Syntax, what got you into streaming? Um, I started streaming because I was looking for people to play with. Um, I came to Twitch looking for people to complete uh, Vault of Glass. And, um, and then I was like, wow, a lot of people stream this game. And it kind of started from there. Um, and it slowly turned into, I guess, a raid help channel. Um, yeah, it, basically, it's a social game with no kind of um, social help within the game. <laughs> so, that I mean, that's why I was pushed to Twitch. And, um, and that's where it started, man. And that was uh, a little over two years ago. So, and here we are. Nice. Lupo, same question. What got you into streaming? Um, so I've been streaming for consistently for about two years as well. Um, but the channel itself existed uh, since about 2013. Um, I used to use Twitch as a way to monitor, like watch my character in Diablo 3 uh, while I was at work. 
because I would find a spot to position my wizard and AFK farm. So I would like take two pennies and a piece of tape <laughs> and tape Sorry. down a key so that I would just hold one spell cast over and over again. And I could watch to make sure like if I got out of position or something like that, um, I would text my wife and say, hey, can you put it back you know, or, or reset it? <laughs> <laughs> and, you got a cool Honey, can you move my there. wizard, please? Oh, nice. No shit. That's what I used it for 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 uh, probably about two or three years. That's what the uh, the account existed for solely. That was the only purpose. Um, and I really, I'd, or I would like show my brother something stupid that I was doing in some game. I would just pop the thing up and tell him to jump in the channel. Um, I actually, until I started streaming, I never even watched anybody else's stream. Um, actually, now I still don't really have the time to watch anybody else's stream. <laughs> Sadly, I know there's a lot of really good quality content out there. This channel, specifically uh, included in that list, uh, except for when Pupin is streaming, then it's just, it's terrible. <laughs> Damn, it's terrible. Yeah, uh, can't do it. Then, when, <laughs> Dude, when... the salt is is definitely the brine solution is God, salty tonight, it's, man. Holy it is God. all love. It is all. What love. did you do to him? <laughs> I did a I did a lot of mean stuff to Pupin. That's for sure. It was it was wrong. It was no, uh, so wrong. Actually, real quick, are, we've played each other twice now, or three times. Is it twice? I think three you three times. I know you won one, and I know I've won one. I don't know what the what the the, the score is the, now. The third one, the third one, we backed out because our carry disconnected. Yo, because he was scared. Don't let him lie to you. I was so scared. <laughs> I was so scared. No, uh, if you heard, I actually said, "Yo, I don't want to lose two v three. Let's get the fuck out of here." <laughs> uh, <laughs> we look good, and we don't waste their time. <laughs> when when trials came out, actually, so the reason that I got into streaming Destiny when trials came out, um, a buddy of mine, Ninja, was streaming uh, a little bit. He decided to try and turn it into like a. Uh, we had the super original idea that no one else had ever had before that of maybe helping people go to the lighthouse because you know. <laughs> No one had ever tried, you know, no one thought of that at the <laughs> beginning. Uh, there was no way that was going to be a thing. So we were like, yeah, we got a fresh idea. Uh, and um, we were like, we'll just, we'll help people out. And we actually, the very first week, we were like, uh, we'll do it for donations. And, you know, if you donate anything, we'll give you priority. And that stopped real quick because it felt like, it felt like a combination of kind of scummy and way too much work because the list built up to like 50 deep. After the first weekend, we're like, nope, not doing this shit anymore. So we worked through the entire <laughs> list and everything after that. Every everything since then, um, every weekend we've done trials has been 100 percent free. Uh, but I actually I started streaming because I wanted to help him grow, which I still do. Um, but that was like the whole purpose of the channel of me making my channel was to run, which it was to like give another perspective on who I think is one of the greatest players uh, in Destiny PvP. So. Well, um, Pubin, do you have any questions for um, Lupo or Syntax? Well, I mean, I, I honestly have questions for both of you, but the first one I would say, Syntax, um, what do you, uh, <laughs> would you like to go in a little bit to your Perma Destiny run and, and kind of talk about what that was like and, and, oh, and, and how that was? Because I am just like, I saw it all over Twitter, I watched it in stream, and I was just, my mind was blown. That was an amazing accomplishment. Uh, uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank but, you very uh, much. Uh, perma removed about ten years off of my life. Um, <laughs> it, it was it was an experience like none other. I mean, um, it's one thing to do a zero death run in a game that is not streamed. And it's another thing to have like an entire stream cheering you on. And crying with you when you delete characters. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I don't know, man. It was, it was something special. It took me, um, it took me eleven characters to get to four hundred. Um, the first, of course, I deleted ten. Um, on the eleventh <laughs> character, uh, the game gave me Red Death um, as my first primary exotic. <clears throat> That'll help. And, um, and that was, of course, this was before they shit all over uh, health regen. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, I, I knew then if if I got Red Death that that was that was my chance. Um, uh, it's one through forty. Um, it's 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 pretty difficult, but things get interesting when you have to risk things like going into the raid 
or um, trying to get the last uh, the last piece from like the saber strike. And previously, previous to Perma, I had never completed the saber strike um, without dying. And um, that was where my last piece was was the heavy, um, and I ended up getting it there. But uh, uh, Perma for me was probably the most fun I've had in Destiny, and it was also the most stressful. Um, and I was I was glad to hit 400. I was also more relieved to hear that there was not going to be a light increase because I didn't want to hear anything from anybody. <laughs> um, well, well, it's time to get back in there. Get back in it the doesn't floor. count. And like, it doesn't 450. Like, count. Yeah, and they're like, uh, no light increase. I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> Syntax, so, um, can, I, can I ask you a question real fast? Because you said sure. something um, that, that, that made me think. You you said that um, even though this is the most stressful part of Destiny that you've ever had, it's also been the most enjoyable. Yes. Do you think Destiny uh, lacks that that sense of urgency since uh, Rise of Iron dropped? Because if you if you guys really think about it, it's easy to rank up your character, but you did something that is completely against the way that Bungie really designed the game. Like you you know what I mean? You yes, made this I game mean, your own, and you did your own thing. We. You, you can walk along and just spontaneously explode in this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you you, you will get bungeed. Um, and so, yeah, the game is not made for uh, zero deaths. It's, it's, you know, it's very much designed to kill you repeatedly over and over. And um, I think since Rise of Iron, it's, you know, I hate to bring up the whole, the whole casual thing, but... Loot has not been rewarding at all. And I think, um, at least in the PvE side of things, like right now, for instance, if before, you know, before Age of Triumph here, you you basically go into Wrath of the Machine looking for infusion fuel for the good shit you got from vendors or from packages. Um, you know, like in year one, you would go into the Vault of Glass looking for a Fate Bringer, looking for a Mythic Class. Oh, and yeah, that feeling. We've, we've kind of, we've lost that. Um, in year three, like in year two as well, um, there there was no real like, you know, we were just just grinding for infusion instead of like going into the raid to get a piece of gear instead of going in to get a number you know, chasing four hundred, uh, for instance. So, like, I'm I'm excited um, for the end of the month because I get to bring people into the raid and they get to go and throw a party when they you know they pick up a. A VOC or a Fate Bringer from Vogue, and uh, that's what we've been missing. Um, mm -hmm. The game, the the grind is is I hate to say too easy, um, but for a hardcore player, it's it's ridiculously easy. Um, mm -hmm. I come I come from the land of MMOs where I know what a real grind is. I played oh, yeah. many years of, of Final Fantasy XI, um, it, where it took me like two years to get to the the level cap. Um, I mean, I, I, I know I, I know what it's like uh, to grind, and this game doesn't have a grind compared to an MMO. But um, the game succeeds because it's it's accessible and it's easy to pick up um, and and have fun right away. There's no real time investment. Um, you know, you don't have to spend hundreds of hours to have fun. There's no build up. And, I, right, right. I, I, de I definitely see what you're saying. Um, it, I actually have a kind of a trolley question for you, Syntax. Sure. And forg forgive me, because no, I know... That's fine. It's fine. I know some of these guys are going to be like, yo, Lupo, you, you asshole. So, get, ready, get ready to cut Lupo off the call. <clears throat> so technically, at the beginning of, of when you start a new character... Oh, God. The, the first thing that happens is they bring you back to life. The ghost revives you. So... Are you are you sure you haven't technically failed every single Destiny run? <laughs> um, I, you know, oh I thought about God. this. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I was already dead. Um, <laughs> I'm I've sorry. I, so I, no, it's it's no. That, that's not a trolley. That's not a trolley <laughs> question. And I'm not going to tell you what a trolley question could be. But <laughs> um, no, that's fine. Uh, I mean, yes, in that respect, uh, I I only I poke guess, fun, yeah, dude, because because your achievement, honestly, to me, is so amazing. Because, like what you said, the game is is not designed to not die. They there there's stuff that just one shots you just because. 
um, there there are glitches in the game that will literally one shot you because you go too fast into a wall off a right. sparrow, or or you hit an angle the wrong way and you just die, or you shoot so, a rocket in a bubble by accident. <laughs> I, that can happen. Dan, too. Dan, <laughs> Dan did it. <laughs> Palomo, did you I'll name your character chat. syntax? Did you name but, all yes. the different ones? Did I name them? Yeah. yeah. Did you give? I no. I just I just named the last one. I named uh, named her off after my wife because that's oh. what that's what husbands do. <laughs> Good answer. This is how you maintain a marriage when you play <laughs> video games all the time, guys. Babe, I'm playing with you. First. Take note. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real though, like that that achievement to me is something so like I I wouldn't even attempt it. Uh, it, it seems so insanely difficult to make it through this game without dying like that, that I hats off to you, dude. I, I might be able to play trials every once in a while and do okay, but I would never be able to do what, what you did. Thank you. Um, I mean, of course, there is a lot of discussion as to how I got there um, and what the rules are and that sort of thing. But when the, the, the rules that, that were issued in December was basically, if you die, delete your character. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. uh, right then I was like, can we make it to 400 without dying? <laughs> and, you know, I, I made it to uh, my highest prior to 400 was 298. Um, I got one shot jump. by the I got one shot by the Goliath tank on Mars in the Valley. <laughs> oh. And he wasn't even firing at me. He was firing at um, somebody else and then just kind of caught it and <laughs> just sat there and I was like, just like that, like which run was that? Um, that was probably probably like seven or eight, something like that. Where where did you bury the body of the guy who was standing next to you? That <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it. I just at that point I didn't realize like how invested in a character I was in this, or how invested you could be in a character uh, in this game. Um, that that character had a god roll LDR that came out of my first Vanguard package, and to just watch it disappear and start from uh, level one was really heartbreaking. Um, I don't know, it was it was it was crazy, and then to see your chat like explode and uh, be pissed off with you was <laughs> was, a, uh, was a special thing. But then you know. And then, you know, you can always start again. And um, and then we went, we made it to 400. And man, it was it was uh, it was crazy. It was a crazy journey. Um, wasn't wasn't the heavy the thing that put you at 400? If I remember correctly, was it? Heavy? Yeah, I had a I had a 398 heavy, and um, the prior the day prior, I had used six skeleton keys in the saber strike and pulled all warlock helmets. Oh my god! <laughs> what, what shit RNG that is! No, so <laughs> what the fuck? It's like Jesus Christ! Like please. Get <laughs> and um, then and that you know of course every time you have to do more strikes, you're just putting yourself more and more at risk. Like the entire run, you, you had to decide like was going for this weapon worth the risk, or was going you know for this upgrade worth the risk, and. There was a couple of times, um, one in the Saber Strike where I pulled a Warlock Helmet and um, in the Valis Strike where I was literally one shot and um, like just time just stopped uh, for both. And, and I'm like, we, we, are, we are 399. <laughs> <laughs> in the hell is happening right here? And uh, one time it was it was basically just um, connection connection issues in the saber strike. I know you've seen like videos on Twitter of this boss like teleporting. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is what yeah. happened, and you know somebody's connection went to shit. Um, basically, I I had a smoke and a shot from the red death kept me alive. Connection um, issues in Destiny, really? <laughs> <laughs> they do um, exist on occasion, so. But yeah, it was um, the most stressful time I've ever had in Destiny and probably the best time I've ever had as well. That's it's very great, rewarding. Con congratulations again on an amazing, <clears throat> like a truly amazing accomplishment. 
Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Man. Oh yeah. Maybe the most impressive of any in Destiny, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, more really? so than I, I really <laughs> think so. Really. That's very flat. Deathless. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, awesome. that's pretty nuts. Thank you. So Dan, really quickly, do you mind explaining mm-hmm. how you died in your permit? Yes. Uh <laughs> so my second character, Palomo, passed when uh you know, I was on the um Spire Strike, or not the Strike, uh, mis- Story Mission, level 20 uh, on Mars. And I was trying to take down the boss, popped a bubble uh, underneath the Spire, and fired a rocket into it. <laughs> and... How'd that go? Um, I'm sorry. It I'm went sorry. real well. Uh, I almost <laughs> cried. Uh, right now I'm on my fourth character puppy. <laughs> and uh, I think he's at like 79 light right now. There's, okay. there's got to be at least a few viewers from my side in chat that will understand the press F to pay respects right now. I'm sorry, Dan. That sucks, dude. <laughs> that <laughs> sucks so bad, dude. <laughs> when, when, when his character died, literally, I, I signed on to Twitch. I saw, I saw Dan was streaming. So I see him pop the bubble. I see him shoot that rocket and he dies, and I just real like slowly scrolled my mouse up to the X for the window and closed it. <laughs> just, you don't want to see it. Don't want to see it. I was That's never it. here. There's no reason for me to watch anymore. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to see a man cry and then curse like muffled oh, curse. <laughs> that clip oh, is in shit. chat, by the way. If you yes, it is. Palomo. Oh, we have a command for it. <laughs> we have a command for it now. Yeah, uh, we have to. All right. Um, <laughs> so let's so I oh, no, I had a question for, for Lupo actually. All right. Yeah, Lupo up? Lupo being a guy a guy after my own heart as a as a PVPer and someone who is supremely talented in the PVP arena in Destiny. Um, do you? I, I by the way, I had a really good time watching you guys uh, in the Farcog qualifiers. You guys really really kicked ass. Um, it was really impressive. Um, do you want to sort of touch on your your experiences in in the quote unquote competitive side of Destiny, um, putting a team together, getting ready for it, practicing, and and you know, and then actually being in it and sort of the experiences of that? Yeah, sure. So um, our, every tourney before the uh, the DCS says Destiny Championship ser- Series for anybody that doesn't know, uh, before DCS started, um, I typically I play with Ninja and Ramblin. Um, this time around when they uh, they put together a team um, and so I was left to, to try and kind of uh, you know wave the flag out there and say hey anybody need a, a an old man PvP player I mean <laughs> in in terms of the people that I'm going up against uh, I actually I turned 30 in 10 days uh, I'm I'm pr- probably at least 20 uh, 10 years older than every player I play against on uh, you know, regularly <laughs> which is fine there's nothing wrong with that I understand it um, but uh, I ended up getting matched up with uh, a couple other, at least one other old man, just like myself, True Vanguard. Uh, Ryan's a good guy, um, and then and Gene and Stev Ryu, who I've I've played with uh, Stev and TV a bunch before. Stev actually more than anybody, including in, in uh, scrimmage games, competitive stuff like that. I never played with Gene before, but I played against him in Trials. I specifically remember a Pantheon matchup on PlayStation where he whooped my ass, and so I knew it was going to be a good team just out of the gate. Like he's a scary goalie player, um, but he we is. ended up and he's very talented. Fours uh, is the 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 format four v four for the for the team, uh, for the tournament or the you know the DCS stuff is a little more chaotic than I prefer. Um, and actually, up until this most recent update, uh, sniping was kind of just completely off the table. Um, people played so aggressively and in packs, and I'm pretty uh, let's let's face it, I'm pretty shit tastic with a shotgun, <laughs> so I. I really didn't stand too much of a chance. Um, I if I if I went positive, and these are really competitive players. So I'm playing against you know 2.0s, 3.0s, and higher all the time. Um, going going positive was like a feat. And when the patch came through, it actually kind of did it did a couple things for me. Uh, for me specifically, one, it gave me the opportunity to snipe again. Um, and incidentally, in the uh, all the qualifiers, I was only sniping. I never pulled a shotgun out a single time, even in Supremacy, which for some people was it was like baffling, but it ended up working out extremely well. And the reason it works is because the green ammo change changed the way that that 
things kind of played, the pace at which the game played. A lot of people were favoring primaries, obviously hand cannon initial accuracy being amazing again, like it was in year one, made people fall back on their primaries pretty hard, which is good. I think that's that's probably the way it should be. Um, granted, now you had, yes, about the tourney stuff and that kind of, you know, and that side, I will tell you that my opinion on elimination is that it is not fun right now with the way that green is handed out. Um, have to agree. <laughs> Trials of Sidearm Cyrus, which is totally fine. But, there, I mean, you look at the stats, especially people coming straight from DTR, um, the numbers don't lie. I mean, people are taking weapons that avoid the special ammo changes on purpose because they don't like the way that they play in Elim. I think they're great in every other game type um, because I, if you're playing the map correctly, if you're taking control of specific areas and there's green involved in that, you always have green ammo. I, I mean, when I play sixes and threes and tourney stuff, I don't ever feel like I'm starved. There will be times where I don't have ammo, but if you're playing appropriately and taking control of the map, then you have green ammo. Either way, uh, being able to switch back to sniping was kind of a game changer. Um, I was pretty burnt out on playing competitive stuff. I, Knowing full well that I'm, I wasn't necessarily good enough to keep up with a shotgun and really wanting to snipe really badly, um, as soon as that change happened, I started playing around with, with sniping a little bit more uh, and a little bit more and a little bit more, and then it started to become like a, a team-approved thing. They were like, hey, you're going to snipe this one, right? And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and I started pulling out every game, and then I started hitting shots. Like, it, it, it think When things just started lining up, it felt good. It felt like it it was supposed to. Um, and I know some people are going to throw the red flag and say, yo, Lupo, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, the special ammo change is, is terrible and it needs to be rolled back, rolled back. They need to, in my opinion, they need to fix it in Elim and that's it. Everything else can stay as is. Um, I agree. I 100% this, agree. With the exception maybe of sidearms being able to Scrooge McDuck uh, their ammunition like, <laughs> like nobody's business. Um, I, I imagine I imagine a trespasser player in trials before each round goes swimming through all the bullets he has, and then he comes and attacks me. Uh, but it, it, I mean, other than that, it feels the changes feel good. Primaries in general feel good, and the gameplay in scrimmage games and in, in, in highly competitive games feels it feels fast. It doesn't feel like you just hold forward as a warlock and then shoot, you know, shoot and melee and win anymore. It, but it feels as though if you're, if you're team shouting and, or if you're very skilled with your special, you can pull off some crazy stuff still, even in competitive games. Uh, in fact, the first, uh, actually, no, the second qualifier weekend in order to, for us to even get into the DCS, um, we were playing Zone Control on Burning Shrine. I put this video up on, on YouTube. Um, it was against a, a team of players that maybe weren't, you know, they're not T1s or anything like that, but they're in the tourney, so you expect them to be competitive, and they were, but I went 21-0 and zero with a sniper. Um, with, in tourney play is stupid like that, that that happened, and so that alone, as soon as I pulled that off, I felt 100% like, 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 Sniping was was in the right spot. I felt comfortable doing it again, and I, I, any confidence issues I had going into that just kind of went out the window. That that was it, man. It, it was pretty insane. Doing dropping it unbroken and zone control on burning shrine was nuts. So if you if you didn't mention your unbroken on burning shrine, I was gonna because I was in your stream when you did that, and I was just watching like he's gonna fucking die because there were, there were like times three times up in mid, and I was like I was like he's gonna fucking die. He's gonna, and then he's just kind of like, oh, shade step, jumpy, jumpy up to the side. And I'm like, the bitch! How the fuck did he get out of that? I'm often told that before each match, I, I there's the only way I survive some of that shit must be, you know, I, I swim in a vat of KY before every game. And I'll, uh, I'll you admit... You must, man. There's, there's some stuff that I can get away with on Night Stalker that just after I pull it off, and I've done... I've actually... Ask stormcallers that have gone against me how frustrating life can be when the person that you're targeting ha is skilled with shade step. I have a bunch of clips of me making stormcallers waste their entire super trying to zap me, and then I kill them afterwards and just start cackling on stream. And I'll fully admit <laughs> it is a hundred percent a cackle. It's not a laugh. I I like I like guffaw. I lean back and laugh. It's stupid, but yeah, that's. 
I've done I think some that's things, the first yeah. time I've heard someone say they guffawed. I've only read it in novels, Fawed. I think. <laughs> it's a good novel. word. It's a good word. <laughs> well, Lupo is from a Charles Dixon, Dickens novel. Well, there you go. Yeah, it was PvP right now, outside of, of elimination game types, um, with some fixes that they have already advertised, and I approve of all the stuff that they intend to do to NLB and scories and sidearms and all that. Oh, you Everything said the S word. I know, I know, dude. It's out there, man. It was, it's actually funny. Somebody uh, when there, we, well, I'm sure we'll get to the the Age of Triumph stuff. But somebody was talking about, oh, you know, are you still gonna be able to cheese the boss? And I was like, guys, don't worry. There's still a cheese in the game. Scories is still there. You don't worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, I don't know. It's I've never really had a whole a, a big a big problem with scories. I understand the way that it's that it can frustrate some people. And I've always told people that, that that complain about it, say, just push more. Just be crazy aggressive because if they don't have an opportunity to build super, then scories doesn't matter. It's just it's just there. So I it, I know it depends on the map and there's a lot of different there's a lot of different variables that come into play and it's not all black and white, believe me. I freaking wish it was, it would make life a lot easier. <laughs> but it it you can play against it as it is right now. The change I think is going to be a good one that'll make uh, at least that aspect of trials and elim game types uh, a bit less um, headache inducing. We'll say, uh, yeah. assuming that they make it so that the the cooldown for getting a kill resets at the beginning of every round, because then both teams have to try and get a kill for the scories to even proc. So, right. I think it'll work out for the better. I agree. Yeah. Wow, great discussion, guys. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, uh, whenever I'm on any of these things, people always say I talk way too damn much, and we no. end up running like double time. So, Syntax, tell your wife I'm sorry if I keep you up later than normal, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's watching. Oh, nice. Hi, Mrs. Syntax. Hi. 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 Hi, Mrs. Syntax. <laughs> All right, guys. So, let's move straight into our weekly activity segment. So, this week's Nightfall is Valis Tarark. I don't even know the name of that strike. Um, the modifiers are Epic, Berserk, Brawler, Fresh Troops, and Airborne. So, make sure you guys go out there and do that Nightfall and get an Icebreaker because it is needed in Trials. But that's if you play Take trials. a jump. Take a jump <laughs> before you shoot. Um, next up is Trials with Cyrus. So, last week's map was Bannerfall. This week's map is Asylum, which I'm actually excited for. Um, quick shout out to Pubin here. Thank you for helping me go flawless on PS4 last weekend. It was fun, man. Got gotcha, you, baby. <laughs> I had fun, man. I had fun. Thank you. It was. It was good. Good clean run. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Lupo, how was your trials run last weekend? <laughs> My trials run last weekend. So over the course of the weekend, I acquired uh, a bunch of different weapons. I actually saw parts of the map that uh, I hadn't seen before. I also barely played Destiny and was playing Legend of Zelda pretty much the whole time. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and I've said this a couple times, uh, even before, you know, just now, I've said it on my stream a number of times, too. Um, the way that Elim is right now, with the way that the special has changed, I don't like using no land. I don't like using icebreaker, and I really, really like sniping. I'm not asking for them to to like set it back to the way it was before, and I'm not asking them to make my snipe amazing. I, it, you can you can take you know longbow that you know that impact tier of snipes. You can make them shit if you want to. Do whatever the hell you want to to them. I still just want to be able to use it. I've said this about. Uh, Actually, there's a, a tweet that I posted um, before the most recent patch uh, specifically about stuff like this um, where, and I, I've played Trials since, you know, the patch came out and I've used sidearms and I use NLB if I need to and I've adapted. Um, uh, so I, I, I like to imagine I fit into that side, but the, the tweet was something along the lines of, as with every patch, um, the unskilled will prepare to complain the skilled will prepare to adapt and everybody has an opinion and that's fine. And what I meant by that was that, um, I don't mean unskilled as in like low skilled players. I mean, unskilled as in players that can only play a certain way and all they're going to do is complain. Um, I play, I play with a sniper rifle. 
uh, but I imagine I like to imagine myself as a skilled player because when change came along that made it impossible for me to snipe the way I, I used to in elimination, I've switched it up. People in chat that watch my stream can can go along with you know can can attest to that too. I picked up a sidearm. I like the Wormwood. Trespasser is hilarious. I I know I can name a number of rounds that I finished with triple kills with Trespasser, including like start to finish full burst kills. You know, if you get the kill and reload, and you just if you keep it on their head the whole time, it's one burst and they die. Cause all six shots would just melt somebody. Like Trespasser is crazy. Just throw it out there, if you, is such a dude. Good unrepentant. Burst. If you haven't picked up Trespasser and you're watching the stream, <laughs> go fucking find one. If your neighbor has one and they threw it in the trash can, <laughs> dig through their trash and pull it out and upgrade that thing and use it because it is hilarious. It is but fun. I felt like with the, with the change and elimination, at least in, in trials, <clears throat> instead of nerfing my gun, they took it away from me. I yeah. don't like like feeling like I'm told that I can't play a certain way. I want to be able to make that bad choice. If it's a bad choice, let me make the bad choice. Let let you know. Let me go after trying to land a snipe with a, a gun. Maybe that they're like, uh, from now on, all LDR impact level snipers will have zero uh, percent accuracy at all times. I'm like, cool. I'm gonna shoot a shot. It's gonna go over there. I'm still gonna try and land it because I have the option to do it. Don't just take it away from me. And I feel like because. They made the change where you lose all your, your green every single round in elimination. Even if I got to keep it, if I got to keep it because I won the round and survived, that would be better than stripping me completely because then the game turns into sit and wait 30 seconds in elim for green or push like crazy in primary. And the people that have that, that have no land and icebreaker are going to have snipe rounds. And I don't like those guns, so either I have to use them and not enjoy the game or I, I just don't get to snipe anymore. And right now, it's I don't get to snipe anymore. And that kind of that takes the fun away. Yeah. yeah. It's like they nerf something <laughs> and you have to switch on to something else now. It's like they take everything away from you. It's not that even that they gave you the choice. It's that yeah. they, they forced you out of it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. All right. So let's play a little game. And it's usually where we guess how many kills the worm would receive in trials oh last weekend. So the game it used to be the Matador. It now used, it used to be Matador. Matador. Yeah, it used to be the know. Matador. But you, you know, <laughs> let, let me Same preface pair, this. Box. Let me preface this question. Syntax, sure. how often do you play trials? Yeah, I probably play like a card or two a month. Um, okay, then, then I want syntax to go first because <laughs> if, because I don't know how tuned your your radar is for the numbers of this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but. I'm curious what a non PVP, you know, like a, a non. I mean, like I said, you play a card or two a month. That I would consider that probably what most players probably play mm -hmm. per month. I want to know what you think that how skewed you think it is, without actually getting in there as much as some other people. Well, before um, you answer, let me give you a range. It's in the okay. It's in the millions. Let's say anywhere between one million and ten million, since it's a lot of us this week. And I and I'm guessing wormwood kills. Yes, it and does. You can say one kill and win. So this is the price. Is right. Yes. <laughs> um. Wow. I guess I'll go with like three million. All right. Plasmic. Syntax stole my number, so I have to guess something else. I'm going to go with 2.5. <laughs> Damn you, there's like, plenty actually, other numbers. I was like, don't say 3 numbers. million, don't say 3 million. I'm going wait, with 2.5. You said 2.5? All right. Yeah. Pubin? Um, it's always the, this function of player base. I don't know what the player base is like, but I'll probably go, say, 3.7. All right. J-Ram? I'm going to go for... Uh, no, three point seven. Uh, I'm gonna go with two point five. SAD. Plasmic already took that. <laughs> oh, he did. Yeah, plasmic. Or SAD J Ram. Two point four. Okay, but just saying, if anyone doesn't know why he's saying that, that's ah, inside joke. Don't okay. worry about it. <laughs> it's <an inside> joke. <laughs> Dan. All right, I'm going with one point two. Ooh. All right, lowballing it. Okay, lowballing. Right. I've won. I've won every week that I've lowballed. You have it's been great. It's true. <laughs> I've got. I'm gonna have to shoot on the high end. Then I'm gonna say three point nine. Three point nine. Ooh. Wow. Everyone Damn. Is, everyone is like in the same range. I like. We that. got a tight spread. We got a tight spread here. All right. 
but the winner is 2.5 million. So congratulations, Plasma. 2.5 million. Damn it. Million. All right. Ooh, S A D. Now, how does this right. compare to other to other kills? And yeah. right, give us the percentages now. All right. Um, <laughs> let me just pull that up. So spoiler alert: Wormwood had the highest percent for special weapons by a long oh. shot. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious, like what it, what the comparison is to yeah. uh, primary so, kills and other specials. So that's number one. So that's the most used weapon in trials last weekend. So next up is No Land at 1.9, and then it's Icebreaker at 1.7, and then it's the Mita at 1.1, and then it's the Palindrome at 1 million, Ayasuna at 782,000, and then yeah, so. That's box. So it's over half a million more kills than the next, the next weapon. The second is this, weapon. Is yeah. this the is this the vendor roll? Yeah, this is the vendor it, because it, yeah. it is actually an extremely good roll syntax. If, you, if you want to jump into sidearms for PvP, pick that thing up because it's pretty crazy. It's, it's, wow. got, it's like Hunt Jury was when it was first. Zen offered. moment and hidden hand, right? Aren't the two main perks on that? I think so, yeah. yeah. I think, think it has. I think it might have high cal too in the middle tree. Yeah, it, it's like yeah. it's it's a crazy good roll, um, and yeah. it's funny too. So if you look at percentage wise, based on some some stuff I've seen other places, um, if you just take no land and and wormwood, those two guns and put them together percentage wise, it's a third of the kills in trials are just those two guns. And most people, when they run, when they're running no land, they're running a, a wormwood alongside it or some other. Side is is this? Is it all it's... fueled because of the special ammo change, or are they actually good? Oh it, no, it's it's both. I, it's, I would, it's both, yeah. I would argue that sidearms came out because of the special ammo change, yeah. and no land grew because of the special ammo change. But no land had a had a, a pretty big build up before that right um, because mm -hmm, because yeah. the changes they had made a while ago i think it was the last april's update with the, all the changes to snipes um mm -hmm. the, the the zoom depth increase the uh, ads slowdown uh and then the flinch changes and stuff and no land was not experiencing the flinch change it still had the same zooms the gun remained the same plus if you're very good at the button combo to do the the reload glitch um, right. you can fire all six rounds in probably six seconds. Um, really? Yeah. I holy shit. I actually. I, I <laughs> might... <laughs> that's like a. That's like a thing. My so God. you guys, I, you guys I have can... so much problems in PvP. <laughs> like, get I that can give you. Sorted. I can give you an example. Oh, I actually, I got more for you on that too. Syntax. The guy that developed the gun actually made some tweets about mm -hmm. about that because people were like, "Yo, you're fixing the flinch, but." why haven't you done anything about the reload glitch? Yeah. And he said that because when they built the gun and when he he, he wanted the, the, the bolt action, um, the length of the animation was so long that they the, the way that the engine was developed, they couldn't position the actual reload occurrence like towards the end of the animation. So it's an end, it's a core engine mistake uh, because the, the wow. gun, it, it wasn't designed to have a reload like that. And so you can cut off the reload and and reset it. Do you know how to do the the glitch syntax? No, not so. Not really. So I mean, you fired it three times. Well, I mean, one time I had to use no ends because of a a raffled loadout through the raid, and that was <laughs> absolute joy. So thank you to all the people that used the goddamn gun and cursed me with having to use it through the raid. You so it, here, here's how you do it. So you, you take the shot. So you're at five, five in the magazine and, and at least one in reserve so that you can right. actually reload. You hit the reload button and sprint immediately, and then you can shoot again. That's it. Like That's right it. after the sprint. You just reload, sprint, and then you can shoot again. Gross. Wow. So I played a, uh, in one specific instance that comes to mind. I wonder if one of my moderators has the clip. If you guys are in chat, maybe check uh, our Discord and see if you can find it. I think I clipped it. But the, we played a game against a guy, and he actually jumped into chat afterwards, and we had a little conversation um, about it because I, I was adamant that he had some macro method set up because what he was doing is he could clear an entire magazine of six rounds with no land in, in probably four seconds. That's nuts. Um, it, it was like shoot, 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 shoot. It was it was crazy fast. Wow! And he stood over my body at the end of a round one time, and I don't blame him for doing it. But he stood there and he emptied a magazine in the time that it took to reset the round. Wow! Like just Jesus. standing over me, and I was like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Um, 
it it was amazing and i can't like i play keyboard mouse and people are like oh it must be super easy no i'm i'm shit at doing the the reload glitch and i you know i don't know it's it's just it's a weird thing it's a weird mechanic but it blows my mind every single time somebody can be just crazy good with it but the gun so like i was saying i think that you asked is it because of the special ammo change i think the special ammo change brought sidearms out like crazy like the week before that they were like four percent of the kills or something and right. now they were like, where shotguns are now yeah. exactly they they swapped because but of it. i mean but no have, land grew because of it have sidearms always been that good or is is you know what i mean is it is it just ammo sidearms, or, say, i would say um sidearms were um because even before even before sidearms are they were now the wormwood that i've had uh for a while now is um with Zen has Zen moment range finder and high cal, and even before the readjustment to the special ammo, it was pretty decent. It was just yeah. that you never really got a chance to use it because the meta then was shotgun. So right. when you pull out the sidearm, by the time you try it, to gun down somebody, the shotgun had one trigger pull, you're already gone. So mm-hmm. I would say they still had that. I still got, um, I personally still got a good amount of kills with them. It's just that there wasn't the opportunity like there is now. Yeah, right. Right. Every, right. Everything just kind of moved around it. Like and they they're not, barely touched it. They're not overpowered by any means in PvP. I, th- I think they're a great gun. They're, it's a really cool archetype. Um, it is kind of sad that you can outgun a last word user with a sidearm pretty regularly yeah. because last word should be like that. You like you're a space cowboy. I'm gonna fire from right. the hip and destroy <laughs> your face. Like that. Right. No, do that's why I used it the second I got that thing up until Hawkmoon came out. Last word was my go-to. In it's my one, favorite like, gun it was, in the game. It's the coolest designed gun because you freaking spin it when you reload and pull it out, and mm. and you the hip fire is supposed to be like it is. It is the space cowboy archetype gun, and they've gutted it. And now sidearms look like they're crazy powerful versus it. When in fact, last word is just kind of. I mean, you're shooting beanbags at people now instead of you know crazy accurate uh, hand cannon rounds. It. Sidearms in themselves, though, I, I've seen some players do some amazing things before this change that that not many people would imagine is possible. But if you practice with them, just like you did with shotguns, you could be really good with them. They just had to be treated a, a very specific way. Um, and if you figured it out, I mean, it they shined in the right situation in the right hands. And not in some way that made them broken, but in a way that made them fun to use. So, I really just, I don't want them to get nerfed. I don't want to, and Bungie's approach has is typically relatively heavy-handed. Um, or at least it feels that way. Now, somebody recently on, Re- on Reddit posted a list, um, a full spreadsheet of every buff, every nerf, and every, you know, lateral change... Um, and they've actually they've actually applied more buffs than nerfs to Destiny uh, weapons. On on average, I think it's like maybe ten percent more buffs than nerfs. Like they brought stuff up. Granted, it, it maybe it's after a, an overreaction nerf. Like they they make a change to a gun. They're like, uh, oops, we meant to do four percent instead of point zero four percent. Our bad, um, or something yeah, like whoops. that. Oops. Or we uh, we we meant to only change hungry bla- hungering blade, but we destroyed the entire game. <laughs> Yo, sorry about and it, sorry about it all even of your it even bled over into PVE and destroyed my freaking void lock in the raid. Thanks, guys. <laughs> dude, syntax, thanks, syntax. If you were here right now, dude, I would give you the biggest hug. I'm so sorry. I mean, it's it, it's really frustrating, um, especially with the game in the state that it is. It's very. I won't say that there's more PvP players, which there probably isn't. There's probably more PvE players, but there's a drastic number more there, PvE players than PvP. Actually, yeah, their their adjustments are 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 PvP focused, and I think it's because the loudest voices are playing PvP, and I think they're kind of tailoring uh, absolutely their adjustments to like what is what is being viewed on Twitch instead of what is like actually being played, maybe. And it's it's frustrating for me for to to you know patch my game and try to go through the raid and see that um, my grenades are not healing me my 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 life steal and my lock is not working and I have to make adjustments to my game 
because of a, a supposed PvP uh, adjustment that went wrong, which I don't believe. They can say what they want, but when they come back and say, hey, we know we made a mistake, but we're going to leave it in and see what happens. <laughs> uh, Surprise! Yo, oops. Like, I, I don't I don't think it was... Uh, somebody there knew what was going on. Um, but it didn't the, seem like it was... Uh, the uh, change to begin with just didn't. still doesn't make sense to me. Well, what, what, what was the change? Let's talk about it. Let's, so, what were they doing? The specific change was Hungering Blade, they felt, was granting too much instant health back. Or they didn't like the regen portion of it because it felt like um, you would... So you would do damage to a blade... At, you know, as they in mid super as they were coming at you, and they'd get the kill on you, and then the regen would just kick on, and all the all the work you just did would just it, it was <laughs> fucking <laughs> fuming. Uh, all the work you just did to bring their health down is reset, and it's like you never you never existed, and they didn't like that. And I can tell you from my PvP experience, if I see a blade, I'm not looking to whittle their health down. I'm looking to knock them the fuck out. <laughs> um, and so I was, uh, you know, I, and anybody that plays against, you know, in PvP plays competitively, you're not looking to like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag that blade a couple times, and you guys could, can you just team shot it? No, I've got my shotty out. I'm ready to <clears> shotgun <throat> in the melee, or I'm gonna snipe his ass as he's flying at me, or something right. crazy. Like you never really went for the, I'm gonna whittle him down, and you guys finish it up. So. The, I mean, the change was kind was, of unfounded, if you ask me. Well, I mean, it it bled through all different aspects of the game. I mean, it sure it, as hell did. It it hurts Soros oh, yeah. and Red Death, like exotics. Like, why, why are we not rolling that back on those weapons? They're exotic. You're just basically just making them exotic shards. And it, it, luckily, it happened right after I hit 400 in Perma, <laughs> because I would have been pissed. Like, I use Red Death to the end, and yeah. um, it's. It was just, it really, like, kind of killed my spirits around the game um, when that happened. And uh, it took me a little while to kind of get my mojo back and stop being so mad. Um, but, uh, you know, because, like, in the raid, my favorite setup is, is Void Lock with nothing manacles, double scatters, uh, the hungering, and embrace the void, you know, and... You know, have, always have grenades, always full health, and it was just fun. And it's been that way since uh, the Taken Spring last year when they, they buffed um, uh, Void Lock and Gunslinger and that sort of thing for PvE. And um, just to have it kind of just taken away because of a supposed mistake that's built over from a PvP change just really didn't set well with me. Um, but I got over it. And um, You don't hate all of us PvPers, no? No, I don't. No, it's not. I don't I hate do. anyone. Um, it's just, it's disappointing because when was, when was the last time they said, look guys, we're going to, um, make a, a serious like PVE change here. We're, we're listening for, uh, PVE feedback and I'm looking and I'm not seeing where that happened, you know? So well, when they announced Age of Triumph, I was like, wow, you know, this is exciting for the PVE side of the game because we get... We get to foc We get a PVE focus. We, yeah. you know, we get to mm -hmm. focus on the raids and and the PVE focus will actually carry on into Destiny Two at the end of the year because yeah. that's normally where the game will start. You know, so yep. um, as it should. I, I mean, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited for this year now. Now that I've gotten over um, my poor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess my follow up question would be as as someone who plays as much PVE as you do and, and has really achieved the mountaintop of PVE I think and you say that that you know they seem to listen more to the loud voices of the PVPers would you have them make any changes to sort of like PVE related changes do you have anything in mind that you would you know if you were in their ear you might kind of suggest to them or or, or something um, like that I would like to see separate characters and separate weapon sets and, and not have so much crossover. Um, I know that sounds crazy, um, but either either make separate characters for PvP and PvE or make uh, specific adjustments, you know, just for PvE or just for PvP. And kind of this, this, I know they don't have the, re they probably don't have the resources or the money right now to be able to have the team do things like that, and I get that. I know where their money is. The money is in Activision's pocket. Mm -hmm. I know that. I get that. Um, their resources are pointed 
to Destiny 2 right now, and it have been for a while. I understand that too. But if there's, you know, we, we can't ever get mad at Bungie. Um, I've always been pissed off at Activision. Um, <laughs> sure, uh, Bungie could have decided to go with somebody else. Um, I, I always make the, the comment that they, that, you know, 10 years ago, they were like, yes, we finally got out from under Microsoft, but we're going to get Activision to publish. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? It, it there's no what? way that it didn't have to do with a funding issue. I agree. Uh, I, agree. I mean, and, and I, I mean, uh, the landscape's going to look different every day for a company like this too, right? Because they, you know, they break away from Microsoft. What was the last thing that they they put out for them? Halo Four was that a was that Halo Bungie? Well, they did Reach. Reach they did Reach. The okay. One, yeah. And so they had some time in there where they're like, okay, well, we can't use any of our previous assets. You know, they had, Microsoft owned it all. They had to start entirely from scratch, right. even down to the engine. They had to rebuild it essentially, um, right. and that's going to take time. And they've got to pay the number of employees that they had over all that time. And and they didn't put anything out for what? What was it like three years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a while. Yeah, that's a long time to to be by yourself and not and pay all those employees to develop something. And not have not have a, a solid source of income. They're probably yes. pulling money from, uh, you know, from sales of of Reach and and Halo Three, it's like you know, stuff like that, because that was still creating income for them. Granted, they weren't getting all of it because it was owned by Microsoft. Um, oh yeah. So I mean, at a certain point, I, you, they kind of have to look at it and say, you know, what's what's in the best interest for for us. So they might have made. A uh, you know a metaphorical deal with the devil, um, whether or not yeah, you want I mean, to do action that way. I just, I just remember when they revealed Destiny, and the first thing I see in the trailer is from the makers of Call of Duty. Yeah, and I yep. was just I was just crushed. Like, what are you guys doing? Um, and and that and that's what it is, man. It's 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 money. Activision is the bank. Um, I wish. I wish uh, Activision would take uh, take a serious look at the people that have played this game throughout the in, you know the three years, um, and say, "Wow, this this community is worth investing in." And I wish they would give Bungie all the money they need to do the things uh, that they want. Um, I have no doubt that Bungie wants to give everyone everything they want. There's no no doubt in my mind. They just they, don't have the resources to do it. They might um, be doing that, but. It, you're not going to see the results until Destiny 2. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I feel like for D2, um, they're going to have more freedom. Because after listening to the earnings call last month, it was, I think, um, yep. they said, well, we're going to let Bungie handle the advertisement for D2. So I feel like Bungie's going to have much more freedom with this game. But well, that's just my opinion on that. I feel like they're going to have a lot more freedom on that. They could paint it, paint it in the light that they want to paint it in. Yeah. Um, I think that the advertising that was done for Destin for the first Destiny as it came out sent a number of mixed signals, yeah, uh, for sure. and that maybe put across the wrong image to people. Uh, you had some advertisements that were very like fantasy shooter yeah. oriented, and then you had one that had Led Zeppelin playing. Um, yeah, and uh, yes. granted. That is still, I mean, that was a really cool advertisement, but it did it feel really not Bungie to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It felt very Activision, Activision. extremely Activision. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's yeah, a really it was good cool, point, actually. But yes, it's a good point. It's very Activision. <laughs> yeah. So, it, I don't know, the, the, the next six months will we'll paint the picture that we need to see, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's whether we we need to see that Destiny 2 is going to be a game that will be a disappointment or we need to see that Destiny 2 is going to be the game that we want it to be um, is still up in the air. But I, I think if you keep your eyes on what Bungie is saying and watch for the, for the made by Activision branding on advertisements, whether it's there or it's not there, if it's not there, then you can trust what you see. If it is there, then maybe take it in a, a different light than, than you would if it were directly from Bungie and keep your hopes up. I mean... It's going to be new and different, and I think that's good. Um, I've always said change is good, right? But mm -hmm. depending on who's driving it is going to make it good in the right way or good in the wrong way. 
Yeah. As it stands right now, are you guys more cautiously optimistic or excited for Destiny 2, given that we don't we don't really know much, if we don't really know anything about it yet? Um, where do um, you guys stand as far as your excitement for the next I'm, step? I'm, I'm, like, more than excited. Um, Bungie knows their shit. I mean... They they know they know how to make a good game, um, and they're not going to they're not going to keep us in the dark until the game comes out. They're going to show us, um, and yeah. they're going to show us really soon. Um, so, I yeah I'm not I'm not cautiously optimistic. I'm uh, I I know that they know how to make a good game. It's just I've always been um, uh, I've always wondered like what kind of money they've been given to to develop though like do they have the resources they need to make it happen and that's always been my worry um, we, we know they can make good games there's plenty of history to show that mm-hmm. um, but I, they won't keep I, us in the dark I don't think it's gonna you know we're gonna show up in September and be like oh here it is guys good luck yeah that's um, never been the, the bungee never. way I mean they freaking <laughs> advertised Halo 2 in theaters so exactly <laughs> Exactly. And then Halo 2 blue balled us worse than any game ever, and I loved it. <laughs> I fucking loved it. So. I think, uh, I, I think if we, if we look at Bungie as a whole mm-hmm. over the last three years, um, they know the mistakes they've made. They've known, they know the things they did well. They know the things they did right. They know the things they did wrong. Being cautiously optimistic, I think, is a very good thing for this game. Um, because it shows that you care. It, sh- it shows that you want the best thing for this game, and I'm, I would ha- hope to imagine that Bungie wants that also. Uh, I think, I think Destiny Two is going to be the game of the decade because they had three years to figure everything out. Because if you think about it, every time we got like an expansion or something new or like a free thing, it's always something that's like dra- not drastically changed, but changed enough where it affected the way you played the game. And I and I think maybe that's that's what they were aiming for to see just how just how players adapt to the s- certain situations and everything because we have to remember uh, there's not another game out there on the market like this Th- this is the only game so there's not like a framework or a roadmap or a template that they can look at they were creating this this game on the fly um, so I think Destiny Two is going to be fantastic now I'm still cautiously optimistic. One thing that Bungie really has to learn how to do is communicate more effectively. The, this week at Bungie is good, but it's not good enough. And when they go radio silent for certain things, it, I don't know about you guys, but that drives me crazy. I, I would almost I think prefer... it's their choice. Um. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you I say, almost, I didn't hear you. I was going to say, I, I would almost prefer if they didn't have anything to tell us, they just not tell us anything. You know, it, mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense. So sometimes there'll be a twab that that is that is, hey, here's some some stuff we talked about last week. Here's some teasers of things we're gonna talk about in the future. There's no mm-hmm. there's no meat to this. All right, bye. I'm like, it's just a waste. <laughs> I, I, they they well, change. It's them, it's them doing their weekly. You know, well, I guess we gotta well, try to do something this week, guys. <laughs> like, it, don't. Talking about the weather isn't a conversation. <laughs> yeah, they had, right. Even, right. right. When they changed the name to This Week at Bungie, they had even said that it might not happen every week. But it's it's still... Is, and somebody in chat can correct me outside of, like, holidays. There hasn't been, like, a standard work week where they haven't posted one. I, I'm okay They might have tried them. it once, but the freaking internet exploded. Exploded, probably. People couldn't Which, handle themselves. Like, guys, they don't have anything to report. Like, chill. And I, <laughs> and for me personally, I would prefer if they didn't have anything that they just don't post anything. You're not yeah. going to break my heart. I'd, I'd, you know, the time will come and they'll say maybe Deej will post on Twitter and say no twab this week, and that's it. I'm like, cool. All right, I'll go back about my business. I'm sure people will cry out and say, uh, oh, Destiny's dying. They don't have anything to post. Oh my god, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, Man, Destiny's just, not dying at all. Like, these guys are working. Like guys, chill. They, yeah, they don't have time to. You know, so, type out two lines to make you happy this week. They have shit to do. <laughs> I don't. I don't like being being teased like that unless it's by my wife. All right, it's just a, it's a thing. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> damn, damn. People have sex. Look out. <laughs> I I've only had it every other Tuesday since I was seven years old. I think I know what it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> the old pro, Dan Finity. <laughs> you can tell by looking at him, too. Like, that guy oh. has done it. Committed relationship done it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you look so proud right there. You were sticking your chest out and everything. Yeah, I mean, Future war cult, yeah, baby. Guys. <laughs> I made love today. <laughs> that's, that's in his journal. That's the only thing it says for that day, and that's it. I made love today. It's just one page. And the, the o, the it's o just love one page in this book. His weekly twab. <laughs> one page. <laughs> this is my weekly twab. <laughs> <laughs> little, little hard for an O. Little, little oh, arrow. God. Wait. I, forget, I'm not gonna I love that it. you had a journal ready to pull out. Like you knew That's, that was that is impressive. impressive. I know he didn't have that like so over. Quickly. It was you just left over from when I moved in here for my office. So I don't know. Nice. <laughs> no, you're probably writing down notes right now. So Lupa, where's Underneath your kind table. of hype level for uh, for D two then? Or did we or did did we kind of get to oh. it indirectly in that e combo or? I, I've always had high hopes from anything that Bungie makes. I've loved Bungie games since since Pathways into Darkness. I played all the Myth games, uh, or sorry, Myth. Uh, like you remember? Do you remember Myth? All you have the little army guys running around, like the the you know, the, the dudes with the giant two handers, and you have all your archers and the soldiers. And it was like it was a uh, it was kind of like the precursor to what Warcraft Three was. It was it's super fucking cool game. Um, I played all of the Marathon games. I loved Durandal and Infinity. I spent tons of time building maps in Marathon Infinity because they gave you they gave you Forge, which is actually the name of the map ma the, the the map maker in that. And it's funny that they kept that name going forward into Halo. Uh, I think I, mean, I don't know if a lot of people realize that that Forge didn't start with Halo. Forge was a thing in in Marathon, um, and Anvil was the <laughs> Anvil was the portion of Forge where you could like edit the, the characters and stuff and change the amount of damage their weapons and, and all that shit would do. It was amazing. Um, but I played, I have played Bungie games for a long time and I've loved every single one of them. I've, I love destiny one. I did. I put like five or 6,000 hours so far into this game. That's it's insane. Who plays 15,000 matches of trials? I did. Someone's sick. Someone's I, I have, a, <laughs> I have a problem, but I still am. I'm still critical of the game because I'm passionate about it. Because I because I've put that much time into it. Because when I when you love something, you're not afraid to to speak out and say, "Hey, listen, this is the thing. I think you fucked up. You might want to switch it." But I'm also not going to flail around like a child on the floor and and cry when they make a change that maybe I don't think initially is the right thing to do. So going forward in Destiny Two, I'm going to have the same I'm going to have the same mindset. The game might not be exactly what I want out of the gate, but I might learn to love it. It might grow on me, and maybe it, maybe the way that they look at it, and the, the you know the things they design, what they put in place, uh, maybe those things are better for you know for the the group as a whole in the long run, and maybe I'll learn to enjoy them. I, I have high hopes for Destiny Two, especially if it's on PC. Holy shit, um, <laughs> my head's gonna explode. I think you can bet on that, Lupo, oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come to PC. I was looking, um, and that's cards. that's gonna do even if you don't play. Uh, on PC, it's going to do so much for this game uh, oh, yeah. in this in this community. Like a lot of people are like, no, you know, um, uh, it started on console, should stay there. It's just ridiculous. Like that, I probably won't play it on PC to begin with because I mean, um, I think the PC will probably mostly be uh, like the competitive arena, really. Yeah. Um, and and all of my friends are on console right now, so. I, I mean, I'll get there eventually, I'm sure. But um, are you on X, Xbox syntax? I play both. I have okay. six four hundred characters on both. So I play so, both. something to keep in mind. I'm, I apologize for interrupting, but no, you're fine. since Microsoft owns both the Windows side on PC, and if you, if people weren't aware, your Xbox is running Windows 10. Um, right. It's the same it's the same kernel. They can technically utilize the same back end, especially with the micro the win the Xbox Play Anywhere stuff. Not that you would be be able to be on Xbox and play with somebody on PC, but there is a good chance that tech wise they can share the same back end database that houses your characters. So if you're concerned about time, 
you probably won't have let's imagine there's three character slots for destiny 2 you probably right. won't have to put in the time for nine characters you probably would gotcha. just have to do six and you could play on xbox one and then be like oh yeah we're gonna do a raid on pc tonight i'm gonna jump on pc and play and you're gonna pick up five people from chat and play on pc and do that raid just cool. keep that that that's a, a, yeah. a there's a good chance that, that can happen because i think that'd they, be so awesome they already did it with they, they've done the the cross-platform pvp with gears of war 4 they did it mm -hmm. as a test for a weekend where pc and xbox players were able to play together at the same time and it's funny actually gears of war proved that uh, that at least with that that setup that style of gameplay that's a little less gun skill focused and more like tactics and arena and and movement focused controller does just as well as mouse and keyboard which is really cool to see um yeah that kind of blew my mind. But for Gears, it made sense. Uh, for other games like Destiny PvP, probably should keep them split because native mouse and keyboard versus the controller would be really scary for the controller players. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's there's a chance. So just keep that in mind. There's a All chance. Right. Uh, I, got a, I got a question oh. for Lupo. What do you... Are you worried about the PvP portion of the game going into Destiny 2? Is, do you think that they will take what they have here and just move it uh, into Destiny 2, or, or is there is there going to be something new there for you guys? Um, it, it's it's fun for us because we're like, hey, we get a new raid, we get story and, and all this, but I'm curious as to how uh, a PvP player views the next game going in when, I, from, from my point of view, you guys get new maps and guns. Um, that's the, you know what I mean, like yeah. How? That's the formula that the formula they've kept with for Destiny One um, is is about it, it. It's expended at this point. It's you know it's kind of spent. They need to switch it up. Um, and so when D two comes out, I have I have a hope for additional game types. They don't have anything CTF oriented, right? They they kind of have. I mean, Rift is similar to that, but there's no. Uh, that that's more like uh, assault was from Halo. You have the neutral right. bomb, and then you try and dunk it on the other person's base. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Um, so there's no CTF yet. They also don't have any the the customization for uh, private matches is pretty limited. Um, they're not doing things that other games, even under Activision's umbrella, are doing. Like Activision owns Blizzard. Blizzard makes World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft I've played for a shitload of years, and <laughs> they have. In, in while they have PvP specific gear, they have PVE oriented right. gear. They have ways to separate that stuff. Things like that can happen with D two that they didn't do with Destiny one, and they kind of already do that if you think about it. Some of the gear has perk setups that you would never even think about using in PVE or PvP. You know, depending on how it's set up. Like I'm not going to bring a triple tap hand cannon in the PvP. That's a joke. Like. That it's just it's not as good as other setups, so right. they kind of already separate that. But as a whole, a new engine, the chance for playing on PC, uh, new subclasses, potentially new movement techniques. It, I look at it like it's a whole new game to master because it, they should design it like it's a whole new game to master. The engine should feel different because it's being built from the ground up. Um, hopefully, that includes things like dedicated servers. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, so there's a lot. There's a lot of chance for improvement. First off, and there's a lot of chance for brand new stuff that they haven't done yet. So I, I'm crazy excited to see what they put out. And if it, if I like it, then I'm gonna try and get really damn good at it. And even if I end up being terrible, like Puban is, I mean, even I'm gonna stick with it. Right? <laughs> Come down here with me. Got him. He threw that in there. <laughs> Boom. This motherfucker. He's got boat. jokes. It's got jokes. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm very excited. Good. Smith is the director for D2. So I really hope that he really brings in a true... MMO perspective on D2, but also keep the shooter aspect, if that makes sense. Um, that yeah, makes I mean, Destiny's, it, Destiny it's hard, it yeah. doesn't know what it wants to be sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like people, 
like comment on like uh, my build a lot, and I don't give a shit, man. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna spend like hours trying to get a five five two. I really don't give a shit um, because most of my time is, is you know for like. Uh, building a super or getting a great, I mean, you stand around and wait for people to go take a piss and stuff. So like that, that stuff doesn't <laughs> matter to me in PVE. You know what I mean? So in PVE, it is very much a shooter, just a shooter. Um, so I don't, I don't worry about builds that much. And, and I delete uh, perfect roll stuff all the time. People hate me. Um, <laughs> if I don't like how it looks, uh, it's gone. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I wish they would, I hope that maybe they'll kind of take the next step uh, into the kind of MMO type world, um, yeah. especially in the PVE side, um, so that it feels like they, they act like they want it to be. You know, they want the persistent world. They want they want us to feel like we're a part of something, which they've done a very good job. And uh, I think the next step is just to kind of add more MMO kind of things to it. And um do, do I think that means uh, forty man raids? No, hell no, God. Please. <laughs> I hope, I wish that with Destiny two they would ship everybody a new mic. Please, oh, you're making my ear <laughs> bleed every day. You know, like these are the things that I deal with. You know, I raid with uh, a raffle team just about every single time, so I don't know what I'm getting. And oh yeah, um, your and, trials runs are the same way. I, I feel you there. Awesome. You, I mean. You don't know what you're getting. Like mm -hmm. uh, it can be a complete toss-up, right? And um, but like a lot of a lot of the 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 raid streams or whatever will will take like three or four helpers or whatever. I've never done that. I've always raffled every single spot. If we complete the raid, we complete the raid. If we don't, we don't. And part of that is dealing with garbage mics, um, people having to go to bed or take a shower. Jimmy! Or, text. I have yeah. to do my homework. Sorry, exactly. gotta go by. Yeah, I, I didn't. Can you just uh, wait for an hour? <laughs> made it, we made it to Vosig, but I gotta go because I I forgot to do my homework, and I'm like, really? You forgot. Or <laughs> like you forgot to to do your homework before you entered my raid raffle. Like, let's, <laughs> let's talk about that for a second. Like, get your <laughs> shit together, man. Homework's but, um, overrated. Like these these are the things that you know that. That I deal with, or and and I'm and I'm sure Lupo does too. With oh yeah, um, it's just but, um, that that's you know that's not that's not the game itself. It's more the the social aspect. But um, I don't know. What, Maybe we'll see improvements there. Yeah. <laughs> what you guys need to well, do to add like an extra layer of difficulty is homework helps as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pass on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my own. And I'm not babysitting when I'm on stream, man. Please, Jesus. Yo, so so we got three round we got three round wins this time. So that means Heavy's gonna spawn. And also, can you read me that math problem real quick? <laughs> Listen, we're gonna get it this time. Uh, y equals Have X you plus ever three. Had and someone just... Also, there's two down opposite side of the map. Make sure you cover the reses. <laughs> <laughs> you have to carry the two. No, no, get my res though. Get my res. Carry the two, get the 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 res. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> all right guys so oh my god we all want d2 so that game is coming news will be coming soon i hope but before we get there we have to get through age of triumph we just have to. wait what's what is what's the oh my uh, god that lupo has because like, oh yeah, yeah. Go, 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 i'm go, sorry go, 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 go. In, in chat fucking greg sipple one of my uh, uh, he's been around a long time there was a time a while ago that uh, every once in a while, so Syntax, maybe, I don't know if you've seen people do these before. I've been doing these since, like, the beginning. Uh, we call them, I call them a, uh, secret runs, where I'll pick somebody up off LFG, one or two people, and we'll run them 9-0. And then when we get to the lighthouse, we'll be like, by the way, you were on Twitch, ta-da, like, uh, Canon camera, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's, it's actually pretty cool. I've had some really good reactions. So people are like, yo, are you fucking kidding me? Are you serious? <laughs> and it's... <laughs> I've only ever had one person be like, I would prefer if you would delete the, you know, de delete the recording. Because at the end, I always ask, I'm like, by the way, you didn't know you were on stream, so I just want to make sure if you want me to delete it, I'll go ahead and delete it. It's like it never happened. That's totally cool. I've only had one person ever of like the 100 plus of those that I've done. Awesome. You see other people like Crafty's doing them a bunch now too, and yeah, that's cool. But there was this one guy one time, I shit you not, in between rounds was going into his kitchen and cooking beef stroganoff. <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you kidding me? To the point where we lost a fucking game because of it. Because he was like, he st- no, no, he started cooking the beef stroganoff after we started the fucking card. So it wasn't like, a, uh, this is poor timing, but I'm in the middle of cooking beef stroganoff. No, this is like a, yo, trials look super fun. I'm going to cook beef stroganoff while we do this. Nice. And I'm like, dude, you, Dan's fucking dying. Is this, but, hold on, this is, this is an LFG post. So he posted is, on LFG at dinner time. Yes, and I picked oh. him, and he had somebody else with him. That they didn't know each other, and we were playing trials, and the dude was cooking his dinner mid-card. And he <sighs> fucking t- he AFK'd out of a game because of it, and that's it caused us to, to lose, the, lose the card. Like, we failed the card because he was cooking his dinner. Just he pause was cooking shit. I got like some stroking off. And even in the middle, like he was still communicating because he had his headset on, but I could <laughs> fucking hear it cooking. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's just beautiful. Oh, could you man. picture this guy in his kitchen, like, you know, just cooking oh, with a gaming headset on, like, oh, how's it going there, guys? I'm like, <laughs> I tell you what, like, man, those dude, kind what of things you... are, are frustrating uh, from a streaming perspective, but I'm sure it's fun to watch. So They're entertaining as hell, though. That guy said, was uh, also naked. <laughs> oh, absolutely! I could, I dude, I could, I could feel his forest of man pubes too. I guarantee you. <laughs> but <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, uh, I we we get our fair share of ridiculousness too, Sid Tax. I promise. I promise, man. I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, that was, that was triumph. Hashtag worth. Now yeah. we can move on. I'm glad. Jay, do you think? <laughs> okay, so I'm glad you brought Age that up, Trump. Ruben, to ask him about that. Okay. <laughs> Age of Triumph. So we're getting our final live event to Destiny 1. Isn't that crazy? We finally m- made it to three years of this game, and it's over. Um. So we're entering a new age in Age of Triumph. Also, there's no increase in vote space, so just want to put that out there now. They're not increasing our vote space, which I think is an issue, but we must move on from that. But actually, really quickly, how do you guys feel about that? No- Yo, Jay, delete the shit you're not using. <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> look, look, look Jay, at when Destiny 2 comes out, it won't matter. Just yeah. delete that shit. It's all so, have- <laughs> my, yeah. my, It's all uh, getting blown up by the cabal anyway. Just, just delete it. Free yourself. Re- I have a, yes. I have a, an actual opinion on the whole thing. So, World of Warcraft builds you into a pack rat. Any MMO like that builds you into a pack rat. They give you tiers of gear, and you're like, yo, I want to hold on to these memories. Remember that boss I killed with this legendary item? And I don't want to throw this away. So they give you space to store all that stuff, right? But over time, you build up so much. You're like, wow, it's been out, what, 10, 12 years? Like, mm-hmm. t- 12 years. Like um, 12. I think tier 19 is the tier that's out right now, and nice. I've, play, I've played almost all of them. At a certain point, you have to look at some pieces of gear and be like, that trinket that doesn't change the way that my appearance, you know, appearance look, you know, it doesn't change how I look, or anything like that. I'm literally keeping it for nostalgia purposes. Chuck that shit. Because, mm-hmm. and the same thing applies to Destiny. And I know it sucks. But you look at your vault and you say, I have six LDRs and 12 longbows and, and you know, not a single freaking but not forgotten on PlayStation. Fuck Sony. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you have all these snipes and you look at them and you're like, I'm never really going to use these. I understand holding on to the raid gear because it has nostalgia purposes because it looks pretty damn cool and because you want to hold on to it and be able to remember those things. Too. But there's gonna be there's gonna be fluff. <laughs> there's gonna be fluff that you can cut out, and they we have quite a bit of damn vault space right now. Admittedly, a hundred and what a hundred and two spots. Hundred eight. Uh, hundred eight. Hundred eight. Yeah. yeah. I just I don't know. It takes I, twenty minutes to clean your vault. I don't know. I started man. last I twenty minutes. Have you seen my vault? It admittedly <laughs> like when I go into trials. I I'm, I only really play on my hunter, but even if I'm playing on the other, um, on a warlock or titan on Xbox, I really only use one or two primaries unless I'm feeling silly, and I really only use one or two specials unless I'm feeling silly, and I use one heavy. Done. 
The rest right. of the shit I literally just keep around because I might want, I'm feeling frisky that day and I haven't had alone time with my matador in a while. And man, the sun is, is looking just right in the background of burning shrine. The mood is right. And so I'm going to pull the thing out, right? I'm going to whip it out and we're going to see what happens. But my, that fusion rifle that it's like 390 and might have decent perks on it and I haven't had a chance to play with it. Don't lie to me. You're never going to fucking touch that thing. Right. Chuck that out the window. That's, mm -hmm. that's my opinion of the fault space. Yeah. You're not going to get me to, to delete my year one Fatebringer, Lupo. You're not going to get me. That's and true. you shouldn't. That's you shouldn't delete. But you should totally what? go in there and delete 12 of those Imago loops that you farmed. <laughs> to... Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I, um, I deleted a VOC uh, like six months ago. And um, it, it was literally because I wasn't using fog weapons because, well, they're year one stuff, you know, and my chat, like, they hated me for it, wow. and um, I don't blame you. I don't blame it's you. Just, it's just it, it, like you're not going to use it. Like, get rid of that shit. Um, I mean, yes, I know a lot of people can't like you know go through a raid uh, maybe as fast or as efficient as somebody like myself can, or they don't have the people to do it. Um, so I look at the raid stuff like. A little bit differently than maybe the average person does. So, it, I, don't, I don't have any uh, shame in deleting shit. Um, we were doing that prior to the podcast, by the way. People hate me right now. So, <laughs> I mean, I just I was just moving stuff cute. out of the vault, and I'm like, here's like eight hopscotch pilgrims. Um, wow, that roll looks good, and that looks great. And delete, delete, and everybody's like, no, <laughs> no! and I'm like, yes, it's been it. You see the you see the light on this is three thirty five. Does that tell you anything? Yes. Uh, delete <laughs> that. <laughs> so and there was a couple of them. Uh, on. One was uh, uh, one was lower than that. Um, you know when they drop like when you're a, a lower light. Like I'd save like a, a th like a three seventy one something. I'm like yeah. yes, I'm deleting this shit, and you know people just freak out. But um, you just have to get rid of it and remember. In Destiny 2, it won't matter. It's all going to be gone anyway. It's all gone in six months. Yeah, yeah, so... That's true. Like, carefully take a look at the things you actually use. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, yeah, it could, it could be a god roll of some weapon you never use. Get rid of that shit. Mm -hmm. you, can't give it, you, can't give it as, you can't give it to a friend, so get rid of it. So, quick question. I use, like, six oh. weapons. <laughs> I use, like, yeah, six weapons. Same. <laughs> yeah, So, once D2 comes out, are you guys really still going to play this game? D1. So, I, I I see your point, just get rid of it, because in D2 we're not just going to use it, but it's it's painful to clean out. Well, I will it's... probably not touch the first Destiny once D2 comes out. Right. Yeah. I'll, never, I'll never touch I'm it hoping, again. I'm hoping that I have no reason to come back. Mm -hmm. As depressing yeah. as that sounds, think about it. If, if we That's want to, to run it. back to Destiny 1, there's a serious issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so yes, I I want to be able to just uninstall and move on. By the way, a totally yeah. I, actually a, a an oddly related note syntax. Um, some people have been going back to the 360 and PS3 versions of Destiny because the special changes are not uh, applied over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 100 serious. Really? 100 serious. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh yep. my god! Oh my god! Like um, guys, like. Oh man, I, I would I actually. Feel, come I feel back bad to for D1. All right, DTR. Uh, so we're doing like trials it. carries on PS3 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Jaden, what were you saying? I would, I would right. go. Uh, is that you, Jake? Go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, go, go, go. All right. Um, I would come back to D1 just after D2 gets nice and settled. I come back to D1, and I play all the story missions just for that one time to recognize that this is where I came from. And then I uninstall it. Delete it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Asia, Tri Asia Triumph launches March 28th. That is just in a few weeks. And I'm excited for this event. So, in this event will come all the raids will be brought up to light level 390. Which means Va, Crota, and King's Fall. Because Wrath of the Machine is already 390. So, also, all the new raids will receive new rewards, including Wrath of the Machine. 
All new raids will receive new sparrows and ghosts, which is included in the um, rewards. And all the armor will dro drop up to 400 light, which means there's going to be no light increase. So, how do you guys feel about that? Are you guys excited about that? All the raids are going to be brought up now? Let's start off with you, J-Rim, because I know you love PvE. So. Um, yeah, I absolutely am so excited for this. I uh, About the uh, light increase, I can care less. Mm -hmm. The the only thing that I'm kind of uh, upset about is the fact that we're only going to have a finite amount of time with this. Which I would have liked to have experienced this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see what these new challenges are. That is going to be dope. So, uh, you know, learning, you know, figuring them out and everything. Yeah. Um, right now, I'm actually in the process of helping my buddy here. We're doing a Crow to Flawless run. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Um, I, I can't wait. So, that is my take. Oh, yep, as I speak. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's shooting two Galahorns. There's a second one. I'm running over to hit Crota. <laughs> one, oh two. Oh, can't get three hits on him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he just messaged me and said, "Hey, can we do flawless Crota? I never got flawless Raider." And I said, and he "Yeah, said, sir, so, I'm not busy. I'm not doing." Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I'm not busy right now. Yeah, like uh, after I'm, the podcast, I'm anybody not in on chat, a podcast or anything. Yeah, after the afterwards, um, anybody in chat, if you if you want a flawless Raider tonight, send me a message on on PlayStation J underscore Rambo nine one one nine. And uh, I will definitely help you out tonight because that's I have no problems doing that. He's Just, on another uh, podcast after this one. That's why. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'll, I'll stream with my personal. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, Pubin, you're going to be doing uh, trials after this, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You so I'll stream with my personal Pubin. then. And uh, anybody, if you need flawless, now's the time to get it. Uh, I would agree 100 percent with that. If you want flawless raider, do not wait until the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go into Crota Zen and get it now if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Crota is going to whip some ass on the 28th. Mark my words. I've spent it many sure hours is. at the last uh, encounter for many reasons. And there's a lot of people that have uh, recently come into the player base that have no idea about the struggle of your one raids. <laughs> and um, I think uh, Vog and Crota Zen is probably going to be a lot more difficult than people think. Um, uh, I mean, I've I'm spent, excited about that. Spent many I'm hours of the Crota encounter, uh, <laughs> just waiting on people to be able to fire their rockets together, or oh. yell at the guy that doesn't have a tracking rocket. So, <laughs> luckily, everyone has a tracking uh, rocket this time around. So maybe it won't be yeah. as bad. We'll see. I uh, think you mean Gallahorn. You know, you yeah, Gallahorn. <laughs> yeah. You know, as part yeah. Gallahorn. Yeah. Just but now we have bubble. things like Sleeper and, and no, other... Not, not you know, to interrupt you guys, but Flawless ways. Raider has just been completed. Not GG, nice. dude. That's impressive. Oh, my really. God. Yep, just me, me and my boy Ice Dog. That's it. Go, Ice Dog. GG. <laughs> GG, Ice Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Wow, I just lost my train of thought, but congrats <laughs> on, the, on the flawless run, raid. <laughs> All right. Did so. you did you guys mm -hmm. see really quickly? Sorry, did you guys see the game rant article that came out that apparently has stills of some of the new raid armor? No. Oh wait, the Crota oh. one with yeah. the There's, with the floaty like, things. It looks like <laughs> fog and it the looks floaty like things. Crota. The floaty bits. About floaty things on the arms. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up. There is some, there is some maybe floaty stuff around the shoulder. It's cr um, it's Crota gear. Yeah. Okay. Cool. They have Crota, Crota, and Vog gear. I don't know mm -hmm. where, I don't know where the stills came from, but they look pretty freaking sexy. Mm -hmm. And the the Vog gear in particular has that sort of um, that mechanical leg on the hunter um, that we saw in the still from from the Twab. Um, I think. It was Let me see if I can week's. find it. Let me see if I can find it. But. uh... They have that up on stream right now. The okay. uh, hunter with the robot leg, yeah. But yeah, well, that, yeah. that new armor looks awesome, by the way. So I'm, Here I'm we excited. Go. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm excited it. to yeah. go through Please the new raids. I, I love all the all the old raids. Um I'm excited. I'm ready. Oh yeah. I Please love raids. I'm, not I'm, I'm a PvP -er, you know, that's that's the label that I get tagged with. But mm -hmm. I love me a raid, man. I, lo yeah, I was man. in Wrath of the Mission. I was in Wrath as soon as it dropped. 
I was in Wrath Hard mode as soon as it dropped. Like, <laughs> I I love raiding. I do. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to get back at it. And I'm really, it really excited me when they said that they think that the Atheon challenge might be the hardest one they've they've created yet. That it's really. All right, so let's talk map. about that. What could it be? To push him off the map. <laughs> Find a I've... way to push. Find a way. I, I heard somebody say something about uh, someone, ha a different person having the relic each time, but that's difficult to to tell who's going to be teleported. You can control it. Yeah, you can't control that. Can't control so. it anymore. So um, I don't Isn't know. I think it, how you used to be able to. I think. <laughs> uh, I think it's still going to be a, a one cycle. I think is the challenge, and an increased mm -hmm. light. I think um, it'll be really difficult. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think it's going to be as, uh, you know, as intricate as making sure everybody holds a relic before you kill them. I think it'll be, yeah. can you one cycle him at 390? Like, mm -hmm. So, so it's, 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 you think it's, it's super be easy right now. I, I hope it is. I hope it makes you bring your best weapons uh, to, to, to drop them in one cycle. I hope that's what the challenge is, but... We'll see. Uh, based on the other challenges in the game, it's probably not a DPS challenge and more a, uh, it's gonna be a, more kill, a mechanic. kill a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kill oh. a certain way mode and not challenge mode. So. Wisebot just slapped me. That sucks. Yep. Uh, can you throw me in a loud quick? I actually have, I don't know if it, this was talked about or not. But something got uh, got shown to me not too long ago. Mm -hmm. and I saw it posted on on uh, oh, identical previous one you sent. Uh, let me do that. There we go. Um, so if you check that out, that is a picture of the Death Singer's Gaze helmet at 402 light. Oh, wow. Is, really? Is it 402 light or is it a old picture 402 Ooh. defense? Not sure. Uh, oh, it's 402, 402, defense. 402 defense. Oh, I didn't even see that. Touché. See, that's... Yeah. And, damn man. it. You know what I mean? So it's PBE not a, players, it's not a light increase. It's you can't. That's <sighs> way back when there was mm -hmm. no. It wasn't just Touché. light. It was uh, level, and like Syntax an actual defense up. value. So yeah, I saw that. I, I got. <laughs> I, I was like, oh shit! Are you, are you kidding me? When I saw it, when I saw it, I I didn't even see the word defense. I honestly, I was like. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I wish I remember that's, like what the defense values were back then. They like, changed. They've changed this leveling system so much. Like mm -hmm. it's nothing like it was back then. There was actually a defense value, and now it's just yeah. light. Of course, yeah. So. Touche, sir. Well, everything that I thought was going on, fuck me, right? I'm just gonna <laughs> shoot stuff in trials. That's all I'm good at, dude. At first, at first glance, I was like, <laughs> "What the hell is this shit?" I did see that. Yeah. And uh, touche, yeah, touche. That's, that's, yeah, I think I think the raid gears, the raid, the new raid sets are going to be. I don't think they'll mm -hmm. look anything like the old raid sets. No, I hope not. Um, yeah, no. Or you'll get like Age of Triumph gear for completing all the raids at the new light, whatever. Yeah. I just do you, Lupo? Do you fancy yourself a raider? Sorry, Plasmic, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I didn't know if Lupo <laughs> delves into the raids too much, or if you just, uh, you know. <laughs> um. So when it comes down to raiding. Me and my friends typically like to uh, go for worlds first, and then we get bored real quick. Um, and, <laughs> and we we routinely finish top twenty um, in the world for knocking them out. Um, uh, like I said before, I, I've done a lot of PVE in my life. I played a shitload of WoW. I maintain the a top twenty five US um, you know uh, raid completion for. All of Cataclysm and part of Mists of Pandaria. Yeah, I'm a big fucking nerd, okay? Everybody in the internet already knows <laughs> yeah. it. Um, so when it comes to t time for raiding, they are tons of fun. And they are tons of fun the first, you know, up until we, like, get all the stuff. Once I got Outbreak Prime and once I got my Mythic class and, you know, once I get... Uh, actually, I'll admit, I didn't even go for uh, Necrochasm. I ignored the mm -hmm. shit out of that one. Um, <laughs> but... Once we've completed the stuff, I don't find myself drawn back into doing them again because for me, I've enjoyed the randomness of shooting other players because they're 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 not routine. They don't follow patterns. There's no mechanic to beat them. There's uh, you know with PVE stuff, 
well, or sorry, with, with PvP, when you're shooting at a player, they can do all sorts of weird shit. They they can for like, as funny as it sounds, when I shoot at at a player, when I try and snipe a player that's not moving, that might be one of the most difficult things to do in PvP for me because they're not. It. Because they're not moving. Why are right. you not moving? You should at least be running in a straight line so I can just shoot you and blow your face off. Why are you standing still? So people will watch me try and snipe, and I'm like, I shoot over here and shoot over here and shoot over here, and I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Just wombo combo and move on. Because I just can't, I can't hit the shot. But PVE is like, all right, well, this guy's going to go to this spot. I'm going to wait here. All right, I shot him. All right, I, everybody go to this position. And the first, the first bunch of times you do it, for me at least, um, and this is another thing that I commend you on syntax, the fact that you can go back into those and it's tons of fun showing new people. I mean, that's part of the, I think that's part of what, tr- uh, the, the helping people with trials draws me in so much because it's, it's yes. other people being able to experience those things the first time. But PVE for me is like, all right, I've done normal mode. I've done challenge modes and the, hero- and you know, the, the heroic stuff. There isn't anything new. So why am I going in again? That's right. like, that, that's the way it feels internally. But I understand why people do it. I mean, I raided in WoW for years and years and years and years, and we did the same fights, you know, fifty times. And it gets <laughs> monotonous. I, there, I mean, there's fights in there that I, I, I have seven, eight, nine hundred wipes recorded on heroic rag at the uh, the end of uh, like in Cataclysm. I we we spent hours and hours and hours, like six hours a night seven nights a week until we were were one of the the first like 25 or 30 guilds in the world that killed that fight i've been there man i've been there and it can yeah i see syntax shaking his head <laughs> you know you know what i've been through dude you yes. know what i've been through. so um i think i think with with destiny i mean i've been through those as well uh in other games um destiny raids are not mmo raids no. um at all not even close. Um, when they introduce a new mechanic in a raid in Destiny, it's something that's been done a hundred times, probably better somewhere else. But um, what keeps me coming back is the people. Um, today, today, earlier today, I got a person through his first bottle of glass and him just being like so thankful at the end for, for having <laughs> that experience. He didn't give a shit that the you know mythic class he got was worthless right now in for in, in the PVE portion of the game. Yeah, it's just, worthless just, in PVP as well. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he didn't care. It was just like he was able to experience a you know a six man raid, um, and and feel a part of something. And I think that's that's what keeps making me go back to the raid. I wish I could look and see like how many. Uh, clears I had with unique fire team members. Is there a way? God. Because, oh, like, this is what th- this is what makes raiding special for me. I don't give a shit about the loot, and I will delete all of it when I get it. It's always, did I do this it with that people. one person? And that yeah. person is like, all he said was thank you at the end, or um, like that's what makes me keep coming back. And it's it's just it's. It's just, it's a very special and unique community, uh, Destiny is. And uh, for people to tell me that I've never completed the raid or never completed the challenge, that's a challenge for me. I'm like, really? Mm-hmm. You want to do this right now? Because I can make it happen. And just to be able to, to get through it. And it might take eight or nine hours. I've been there in Destiny. And as long as they don't give up on me, I'm not going to give up as long as I have the time. And um, just to be able to make it through those one or two like ridiculously long uh, raid attempts and have people watch you uh, endure is is what makes me keep coming back. The the Destiny raids are not that complex um, from a a, a rating uh, perspective, like an MMO rating uh, perspective. But the people that you throw in there can make things very interesting. <laughs> very. <laughs> so um, it's, 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 it's just a special thing, man. And when you can pull off like some raids where uh, some shitters in chat come in and told you you would never make it with those fire team members, and I could tell you, you know, tell them, uh, I told you so. I told you. 
um, it's it's just a very good feeling. Um, and there's a lot of people, especially like from my stream, that that came and were like, "Hey, man, can you carry me?" And I'm like, "No, no, I cannot carry you through the raid, but I can give you the tools and the people you need to make it happen." And uh, you know, we we teach them teach them how, and then then you sit there and, and and I look through the directory and I see these people streaming and I see them making their own fire teams now and helping people through the raid that they had no confidence in completing prior. And um, that makes me like incredibly proud uh, to see that, you know, uh, my channel can make that kind of impact, uh, even if it's a small impact. That that one person telling me thanks uh, is is all I'm looking for. Um, and it feels good. It's it's fun. It's fun when you can play the game with different people all the time, um, and just make things happen that they they just assume they would never be able to complete because they don't have friends. And I'm like, wait a minute, you don't have friends? I've got a few friends. Um, <laughs> I know. And then that's where guys. it's <laughs> right. I mean, that's where it, that's where it starts. And then we just you know, and then all of a sudden you have like a a dedicated raid team every week like you stumble mm -hmm. you, you stumbled into that and um i don't know i'm just uh, i'm incredibly proud to be a part of destiny and I'm, uh i think it's it's just something special man and um i just like to feel that i'm doing my part to um to build a community and mm -hmm. keep it like in that that positive like we're in this together type thing um Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, awesome. I, can keep, I can go on and on. I can talk That's about awesome. it all day. Uh, yeah, I love Lu it. <laughs> Lupo, like, do you have any experience, like, or like, what are some of your experiences helping out with like some like um, special case? Huh. Not special case. That's weird. Uh, I don't know why I phrased it that way. Yeah, Lupo I, might or might not have a good story. Um, so <laughs> it's it's actually it's. I've been kind of fighting internally on whether or not I, I, I wanted to talk about this um, with you guys because I know, and even just thinking about it, I already know I'm going to get choked up thinking about it. Um, so the beginning of January, January 1st and 2nd, I did um, I did a charity event for the Make Wish Foundation, um, and actually I, I managed to pull a bunch of strings and and call in favors that people totally didn't owe me, um, and. Uh, I I was contacted after I had start started talking about doing that. I was contacted by a, a subscriber of mine uh, named Lotzor who had uh, a friend. Uh, fucking shit! I might have to turn my camera off. Um, Gambino uh, was his, his PSN. His name's Mike, and he had colon cancer. Um, and had never been to the lighthouse before. And he's is dude in his forties. Um, nearly pro, you fucker. Um, Dude in his 40s, uh, he has two kids, a wife, uh, and he uh, he's he's often uh, he was often on enough medication that he couldn't really uh, focus for too long. He's in a lot of pain all the time, and his friends have been trying to uh, trying to get him 9-0, um, and they couldn't. And so I asked the dude, I said, "Listen, I I, I hear stories like this a lot because uh, I do. People say, hey, you know." Uh, it's my birthday, or my dog just died, or blah, blah, blah. People will literally say anything to try and get into a run sometimes if they, if they want it bad enough, because they don't understand the, the gravity of what they're, what they're actually saying. Um, and so I said, is there any way you can provide proof? Uh, and he started going a way out of his way to try and get proof that Mike uh, had, had colon cancer. And he was like offering up Facebook links and stuff that I couldn't get access to because the person had their their privacy settings set the right way, that that kind of thing. But after he started, I said, "You don't just stop. You don't have to." You, the fact that he was going out of his way, putting himself out there, um, kind of risking his own integrity for his friend, that alone said to me that he was telling the truth. Um, and so I agreed to do the run. And so we started the Make Wish. Uh, event on January 1st at noon uh, with Mike. We ran him 9-0 and, and I got to listen to a grown man who uh, was in a lot of pain laugh like a little kid for 45 minutes and enjoy the shit out of 
Destiny in a way that he hadn't been able to because he'd been fighting against his own pain for a while. Um, and we, so we got him 9 0, and, you know, we did the rest of the charity event. I had, like, um, Cosmo. We raffled off some runs with Cosmo, and I pl- got to play again with, uh, uh, with Kim.com. If people know who Kim.com is, if you ever heard of Mega Upload, I, uh, he, and I, he and I talk on a decently regular basis now, which is such a weird thing to say. Thanks, Twitch. Um, <laughs> but we, I, I heard, I found out not long ago that Mike passed away. Um, and I, I, I mean, I didn't know the guy outside of, uh, outside of trials and, and I didn't, I got brought in to help make this man happy. I I was given the chance to help make this, this guy happy. And I did. And when I heard that he had passed away, it, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's just being able to to touch somebody's life like that in uh, in that way. And, and actually, it's funny. I, I posted the story to Reddit, um, and then Lodzor said that the, his wife had set up a a donation link to help pay for for funeral costs. Uh, and uh, and in, in like an hour, they met their goal or something crazy. Because uh, I, I attached it to the Reddit post and it got put all over the place and people came out of the fucking woodwork and that 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 experience start to finish is why I play Destiny. It's not even the game anymore. It's not it's not going nine zero. It's not it's not streaming. It's not it's the it's the people every goddamn time. Um, and I'm right there with you, Syntax. Every single time you get to ch- the, the chance to hear somebody do something that they've never done before, and and even if they just say thank you and that's it, and ev- it's it it is a, a a level of reward that I don't find anywhere else. Yep. Thanks Fucking for sharing awesome, that, man. dude. Thank I know, it's, I know, it's tough. Hell of a guy. And H- hats off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even know what to say because like sorry no no no, no, no. you're fine it's just that that's like, just a beautiful I thing s- man yeah. and, um, it is i saw that story awesome. get tweeted out by luke smith and i read the article i was like wow so, you fucking tagged me too yeah that blew my mind <laughs> a bunch awesome. of actually a number of bungee employees replied to the reddit thread and i was it was mm-hmm. it, it you did a good thing man it's it's scary like, when the pe- the people that make the game that you play a lot have their eyes on you though. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, you know, outsiders looking in or, or those that just kind of stop by your Twitch channel or find Twitch for the first time will say that's just a game. Um, mm-hmm. But I say it all the time: uh, it's a game with real people. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you need to really kind of step back and 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 realize that a lot of people don't. Um, yeah, you might be you know bitching about a, a an adjustment in the game or a, a nerf or a buff or something like that, but um, the reason you care is because there's real people, <laughs> yeah. and um, it, it's not it's 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 not just a game anymore. Um, this community is just a beautiful thing. Just a beautiful thing. Man. Good for you, Lupo. That's awesome. Yeah, this community is just awesome. Like, we are all traveling down to Florida for Guardian Con. We all oh, we shit. meet up to see each other. It's just, this community is amazing. And I'm, and I'm happy to be a part of it. So, thank you. I'll be there. <laughs> so will I. I think, yeah. <laughs> Alright, um... Basically, let's just wrap up Roman Age of Triumph. I was about to say Moment of Triumph. But <laughs> let's just wrap up Age of Triumph and let's just say we're getting a new record book. It's going to have 13 pages, all new raids, no light level increase, no vault space. Just have fun. The thing launches on March 28th. Um, we, we are going to be streaming it here on DTR. Um, Syntax, will you be streaming it on your channel? 
I I'll don't. probably go back to playing Horizon Zero Dawn <laughs> since everyone. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can we? Hey, look, can we talk about that for a second? Yes. Um, do sure. you guys mind? Because yeah, I know Luke was uh, playing yep. Zelda. Zero Dawn made a comment, versus my made a comment about Wild. like how many people were watching him, and um, I I played uh, a lot of different games in February, and um, yeah, uh, for better or for worse, um, uh, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not the best for the channel. Um, but uh, it's it's exciting to be excited about Destiny again for sure. But um, um, is is Zelda the only game you've played, Lupo? Outside, um, so I've been playing. Uh, so since Zelda came out, it is the only game that I've streamed literally until um, Wednesday, uh, and then after actually after this tonight i'm gonna play some trials for the first time in a while so i'm kind of scared i'll probably go back to zelda <laughs> and, and hide um, before too long. zelda stream but dude i've been streaming zelda constantly since release and i will i will tell you everybody in chat that's watched and and i know for sure and my my wife if she were downstairs i think she just pulled the stream up a little bit ago um i haven't gone to bed like frustrated i haven't had a, uh, I haven't had anything but a big fucking cheesy ass grin on my face. <laughs> stream because, dude, it's it's so good, it's so good. Uh, I I haven't played a game that has drawn me in in this in this way in a long time. Maybe since Destiny first came out, because mm-hmm. I remember on the initial release, practically feeling like I was going to pee my pants. I was so excited <laughs> to play Destiny. This mm-hmm. this is. This is like a, I preemptively ha- I have two diapers on double layers because, <laughs> because I don't care if I'm going to pee my pants. That's how excited for Zelda I was. Um, and it's still oh dude it's so good. What, how's how's Zero Dawn man? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is like this masterpiece of a mm-hmm. game. Um, it is just so beautiful man. And the combat makes you feel like every fight is like a boss fight. Um, it's Ah oh, man, I, I don't know. It, I I wish I could spend like like off stream time, like really just kind of enjoying the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, I've, I've had the same feeling. Like um, like you get through like this epic fight, and you're like, man, that was awesome. It felt so good to like have fun, not playing Destiny for a little <laughs> bit. Um, and uh, it's I don't know. I, I, the story, the the world, I mean, just very, just very much feels alive. I highly recommend it, and it's almost. I don't want to say it is um, because you don't want to like speak on other people's financial situations. But if you ever thought about buying a PlayStation Four for one mm-hmm. game, make it that one. It's uh, it's it's just a great experience. Great. I've heard experience. I've heard that a lot. Uh, a, a number of people have said, "Yo, you, you like Breath of the Wild? You should probably play Horizon as well." It's like, great. Give me more time in the day. Create more hours. <laughs> Let's not talk about time. And that's a yeah. whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is a whole other fucking podcast. Well, I mean, and I think that opens up a bigger a bigger thing that I, I feel like I feel like a lot of people feel like they should feel bad for playing other games outside of Destiny. And I no. think like I encourage people to play other games outside of Destiny, especially in times where the you know there's no new content, you know you're doing a lot of the same stuff, and that's fine. You want to play Destiny, play Destiny, but don't be afraid to go try a new game. Don't be afraid to have fun in a yeah. you know in a different yeah. game. Yeah. Um, the the thing about it is though, um, when when you're primarily a Destiny streamer, at least in my uh, experience, the first thing that people will say is, "Are you raiding today?" Yeah. And, <laughs> Yep, and like like the title and the directory is not even close to Destiny, right? Now. <laughs> and it's 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 have like, you, man, I just I, I I want you to enjoy this cast. Please watch. Have and, you ever uh, had people come into chat if you're streaming something else and literally be mad at you that you're not streaming Destiny? <laughs> well, because that's tr- every trials day that I don't play Destiny. That's my life. Um, <laughs> I can only imagine, man. Uh, I, f- I feel for you there. That's that's right. Like I just want to play video games. At least, <laughs> at least uh, on the PVE side, we can do it whenever the hell we want. But 
that takes a lot of balls on, on like your end, Lupo, to say, look, I know trials are going on, but F trials, we're playing Zelda today. Like that's uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome, man. And it's um, you should be proud of that. Um, and Those Zelda's like drugs for me, syntax. I don't <laughs> think you understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> the shit is the shit is so good. <laughs> no, it's yeah. I, I, it, it can be tough. It can be tough. Actually, Ruby and Chat said the Destiny community is honestly the only one where I've seen people who never played other games except Destiny who have to be pushed to go play other games. I will admit openly, I fall into that second category. It is tough mm-hmm. for me to shy away from this game when there are things to do that could be considered relevant because. Because people, the, there's a strong push from the community for for you to play it because they're like, oh, you know, I'm used to you playing Destiny. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'll play Destiny. Or there just isn't anything that can really pull me away. Now, right. the, the perfect storm hit for me where Trials <laughs> right now is not fun in the way that it used to be. And a, a game from a franchise that I've been enamored with since I was three came right. out. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and jump ship for a little bit. But actually, since then, if I've streamed Destiny, and I'll probably do the same thing tonight, it's gonna say I quit Destiny as the stream title uh, because <laughs> cause it's literally because every every day when I close the game, technically I'm quitting it. So it just, <laughs> I, I love trolling people with stream titles. I try to do it every single time. So I think one of the like in the last month, I played. Uh, I played Resident Evil. I played The Last of Us for the first time. Ooh, um, nice. I mean, like a lot of awesome like titles to play on stream. Um, and you know, your your regulars that is like um, that's like doing your fan service to them. They're gonna watch you whenever you're playing. It doesn't matter. They're gonna be yes. there, and they enjoy that. And um, so it was nice to like to give them ex- that experience and have that experience with them. But there's like the off comments from some will come in and say, well, um, you know, kudos to you for taking a break from Destiny. And like, no, no, no. So you don't understand. I didn't take a break from Destiny. Like, I didn't say, look, man, I'm tired of this shit. I'm taking a break from Destiny and go and play another game. That's not what happened. What happened was I would like to experience this other game. Yo, Syntax, you're in a different directory. I heard you quit Destiny. That sucks, dude. Sorry about your career. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, like, and and you're, you're you're trying to to enjoy like the last of us all right for example mm-hmm. for the first time and a comment like that just kind of takes you right out and you're like yeah what? yeah what like what are you saying right now like what uh I've, when are you I've rating today that. i'll I come understand. back what what time do you think you're rating cuz then i'll come back <laughs> oh come on man I, please uh, <laughs> give me a freaking break just give me give me a break and uh, yeah. but it's it's it, it, that's that's the passion of the Destiny community though, and that's that speaks more to the community and and the people that that frequent our streams. So, yeah. well, I will better. say as mm-hmm. as as a as a growing streamer, I was really I was really nervous the first couple times that I like played games that weren't Destiny. Like when I started getting into Overwatch and when like Titanfall came out, and I wanted to play Titanfall, and yeah, it's. It's it's good and it's bad because you have your people who are so so into Destiny and watching you play Destiny and stuff like that. And in the end, I definitely think it's worth it to venture out as as a, just streamer wise. Even though you you typically see numbers dip, but um, there's there's something special to be said about if at least from my you know the the way that Trials has grown and the way that my stream has grown with Trials, being able to 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 jump in. And Thursday night, I killed Ganon in front of 120 people. <laughs> that was awesome, and that's that's smaller than what I typically get for for playing trials um, by a pretty big margin. But it was like 120 people that have have been around. There are there are a shitload of people in there that had followed me through the entire journey, start to finish, from when right. I started the game to when I killed Ganon on Thursday night. That had been there the whole time. And that's like. That's that was it was so cool. It felt so good, and I even, I even did I, I had the opportunity to position the last shot, and then look at the camera and talk shit again <laughs> as I shot nice. him in the fucking face. It was nice. so good. <laughs> so, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, for for 
you know, for fellow streamers, like you have to, something is to be said for the quality of your viewers versus the quantity. Um, mm -hmm. There's something special. You you feel that when you play other games, like the people that are actually there for you, regardless of what you're playing. There's there's something special there, you know, and you need to kind of like look at the quality of the people that are watching, quality of the people that want to hang out versus uh, big numbers. I mean, you yeah. if you look at bigger number streams, like how many people are quality, like kind of look at it like that, and uh, don't be discouraged. Have fun. Can't have fun, can't stream. So, agreed. Agreed. Oh yeah. Well, guys, we've had an awesome show tonight, guys. Thank you, thank you so much, Syntax and Doctor Lupo, for joining us this week. We've went, we talked about streaming tips. We went to trials talk, and it, we just went everywhere. Thank you. A lot, I had, a lot I had of trials fun. talk. <laughs> a lot of jobs. Show up to text. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we talked about PVE. It was awesome. I had a great stream. Thank you guys so much. So Thank you for having us on. Yeah, so. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening you to so the much. 20th episode of the Destiny Tracker Podcast. Thank you, Syntax. Thank you, Dr. Lupo, for joining us this week. So where can we find you guys on social media? Hold on. Hold on, Jaden. Latte's not coming. Huh? Huh? Oh, I think he's he's in another raid. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Ray's oh. in, yeah. Jay Ray's right. in another. <laughs> no, that was my fault. Yeah, I'm running two more people through right now. Follow It's a second podcast. <laughs> it, Love it. He gets it <laughs> messed, mixed up all the time. Love this it. podcast ran over, so he's into his yeah. next flawless run. Yeah. <laughs> Syntax, you go ahead and go first, dude. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Syntax7. Uh, the V is not a V, it's a 7. Uh, probably a big mistake. Uh, same thing on uh <laughs> Uh, Twitch um, S-Y-N-T-A-X-S-E-7 E-N um, and that's it uh, Twitter and Twitch uh, nice. Dr. Lupo if you're looking for me on Twitter it's it, oddly enough it's Dr. Lupo on Twitch uh, if you're looking for me on Twitch it's just Dr. Lupo and then if you <laughs> feel like watching some YouTube stuff including anything that I talked about earlier tonight uh, it is uh, Dr. Lupo TV nice J-Ram you could find me uh, Twitch and Twitter and YouTube J underscore Rambo nine one one nine. That's it. Nice. And Crotazen. Oh, yep. And Crotazen. <laughs> Plasma. And Crotazen. Yeah, I'm doing that all night. The wife. The wife is gone. She's with her friend tonight, so I'm playing without nice. my pants on. Nice. 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 <laughs> As it should be. At As it should be. I've been Plasma podcasting. And, it's uh, been great. Plasma underscore leaf. Um, just repeat that Twitch thing, Plasma. I didn't hear that. Plasma gray there. Okay, Pubin. <laughs> um, so you can find me on Twitter at uh, at Pubin underscore. Um, and speaking of branding mistakes, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash trigger happy underscore. <laughs> but the A in trigger happy is a four. Oh god. There is there is a poll on my Twitter right now where people are voting on what I should change my name to. <laughs> um, but, you can uh, either change your Twitter to match your Twitch or your Twitch to match your Twitter. You realize that, right? You can flip either one of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm changing I'm changing the Twitch to match my Twitter, but Pubin underscore is already taken. It's going to be some variant of Pubin something, but right now it's trigger happy underscore where the A's a four. That kind of rolls off the tongue when I say it that way, at least. <laughs> SEO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. but uh, yeah, uh, I am Danfinity on Twitch. Uh, you can find me here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as Sunday mornings, uh, helping you out with PVE stuff. Um, on Twitter and Instagram, you can find me on Danfinity Twitch, and that's pretty much it. Nice. So you guys can find me on Twitter at j underscore dtr. You can find us on Twitch here at Destiny Track on YouTube at Destiny Tracker. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the 20th episode of the Destiny Tracker podcast. I am your host, Jay, and we'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye.